in a place defined by the tide, it will be a day forever scarred by the wind. The afternoon of April 27th, the deadliest tornado in the history of Alabama tore through Tuscaloosa. Carson Tinker, Alabama's starting long snapper, was at home with his two roommates and his girlfriend, Ashley Harrison, when they sought shelter in a closet as the twister bore down. The last thing I remember is, is I was holding on to Ashley and I was, I was just squeezing her. And then I, I, just, I just got just pulled out. I mean, just, just like that, and that's, that's the last thing I remember. The wind threw Tinker 100 yards through the sky. He landed in a field across the street, unconscious. Across Alabama, 247 people died in the day's tornadoes. In Tuscaloosa, 50 were killed, including Ashley Harrison. She was 22 years old. I mean, I, I shouldn't be here, you know. I know that, that I'm here for a reason, just like there's a reason that, that Ashley's not here. I think about that every morning when I wake up, that I'm blessed to have this day, and I try to make the best of it, so. I mean, in the long run, I'd like to do anything that I can to, to help other people out that have been through some of the things that I have. And those thoughts are shared by all of us attending and watching games today. There have been so many things outside the playing field on people's minds. That tornado, the flooding here in Pennsylvania and throughout the Northeast, the wildfires in Texas that have caused so much devastation, and of course, tomorrow the 10th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. Those lost were honored during the national anthem today with a color guard of New York City firefighters, followed by a flyover from the F-18 Hornets. There was a person in this stadium that was not singing the national yeah. anthem. It was something special. You know, Brad, I had a chance to go down to Tuscaloosa a few weeks ago to watch practice, and after practice, Jeff Carrington took me on a little tour of the, the devastated area from the tornado, and, uh, you know, even though they've cleaned up a lot, you could still see uh, what still has to be done. And, and before the game, when I was down on the field, you know, I walked by Carson Tinker, and it just tugged on my heart because yeah. for most of us, you know, after a few days, we get back to life as normal, but for him, He's living it every day. Well, for at least the next three and a half hours and through the weekend, let's find some escape in what we love. College football. Penn State won the toss. They want the football. So Cade Foster will kick. Davon Smith and Chaz Powell are back deep. Chaz Powell took one on the opening kickoff to the house last week for the Nittany Lions. There he is, number two. The kick will go to Smith at the four. And down at the 20-yard line, that's where Penn State will go to work with Rob Bolden, the sophomore quarterback. And a year ago, Todd, he goes into Tuscaloosa, and it's a tough spot. But as we take a look at our Chick-fil-A impact players, he's going to get help from this guy, who had a big game last week, takes over for Evan Royster, who's in the pros now, two touchdowns a week ago. Jordan Hill defensively had a career high in tackles in Tuscaloosa last year. And Chaz Powell, we talked about not only in the secondary, but a great return man as well. There's your impact players for Penn State as they work from the 20-yard line. And it'll be bold him to roll the throw on first down. He's going to air it long, and he's got a man. Davon Smith had it in his hands and couldn't hold it. Well, I was a little surprised Penn State took the ball if they won the toss. But I'll tell you what, they want to be aggressive in the first play of the game. This is a beautiful throw by Rob Bolden. And right away you saw a couple things. They're going to challenge Alabama, and they're going to move the pocket. The first pass play, Rob Bolden rolled to his right a little bit and threw, threw a beautiful pass Oof. just a little bit too far for Smith. And Joe's up there saying you can't do it any better than that. Now they go to the ground with a fullback. He got a yard maybe. The Penn State offense working against the defense that is so stingy, especially against the run. Well, and, and this is the problem. When you come out and throw on first down, as good as that looked and as close as it was, and then you get stuffed on second down, now you play right into the hands of this Alabama defense. Third down and seven plus is when they are at their best, and they really get after you in terms of putting pressure on the quarterback. They only converted one of these situations in Tuscaloosa. Last year, a third and seven plus. Third and eight here. Bolden, plenty of time. 
Fires a strike. Got a man, and it's Justin Brown. So they're one for one. They're as good as they were a year ago. Well, it starts with the protection. And I mentioned if you have to pick one area of the game to focus on to see if Penn State will have a chance in this game today, it's the offensive line, how they hold up against this Alabama front seven. And two pass plays in this first drive, excellent protection for Rob Bolden. On a third and eight, he got 15. So first down at the 37-yard line for the Nittany Lions on their opening drive here in the opening minute. Joe Suey, the fullback, with Silas Red behind him. And a whistle. Now they had to take time a timeout. Yep. Yep. Time out, Penn State. First time out. Matt Austin, our referee a today. Second time out. You know, it's interesting. When we talked to Jay Paterno and Galen Hall yesterday at Penn State, they, they said, you know, we moved the ball. We, we felt like we had some confidence moving the football, and, and our kids are confident coming into this game. And then we went over and met with Kirby Smart, and he said, you know what? It was kind of a perfect storm for us because right. they moved the ball on us, but they turned the ball over down in scoring territory, and we were able to jump on them a little bit. That was Jay on the right and Galen Hall in the middle there in the booth. And, of course, you saw Joe Paterno. Jay's father also a legendary coach with 402 wins working from the booth because of the injuries he suffered back the first week of August when he was run over by one of his own players Davon Smith who was the intended receiver on that opening pass of the ball game. So Joe's working with a little shoulder problem and a little hitch in his pelvis yeah. and he's uh, walking around with a cane but he showed us that uh, doesn't need the cane all the time. He's trying to get back into his six mile a day walking shape at age 84. <laughs> <laughs> And there's Davon Smith. Luckily, Davon's 157 pounds, or Joe might have suffered worse injuries. So first down. Following that timeout. Play action. And Bolden fires it out, completes. Joe Suey, the fullback, and a pickup of four as we check in. Third member of our team, Holly Rowe. Holly. Well, guys, all week it's been back and forth on who would start this game, a quarterback for Penn State, and the coaches decided to go with Rob Bolden today. But they've told his backup, Matt McGloin, who is right behind him, neck and neck. They call him two number ones to be ready. Joe Paterno told me yesterday he wouldn't be shocked if they split the reps because both guys can do certain things well. But right now, Rob Bolden looks like he's getting off to a good start. He's off to a great start. Second down and six at the 41. Red weaves his way to a first down. Nice run. Right up the middle. Out to the 49. Well, you couldn't ask for anything better for Penn State than this opening drive. They were aggressive with the pass on first down. They converted a third and long, and now they're getting Silas Red involved, and they're nearing the 50-yard line. So this is exactly what Penn State would have hoped for coming out to start the game. Silas Red, I mentioned, takes the top spot from Evan Royster, who ended up being Penn State's all-time career rushing leader, having gone on to the NFL. And now, first down as they're close to midfield. They'll give it to him again. And Red, nice gain again. Got to the 47. Nice mixture of run and pass right now for Penn State. Getting the ball to Red, the fullback ran at once, and then short passes, getting the ball out of Rob Bolden's hands and moving the change. You, you have to stay ahead of the chains against Alabama. What I mean by that is you have to stay in third down situations in less than seven yards. Right now they're on a second down again. Second and six for the second time on this drive. And now it's Bolden in the shotgun for the first time. Quick look to the right. And it batted down as he was trying to throw a slip screen out in the flat to Davon Smith. And Damian Square says, uh-uh. You know what? I think that Rob Bolden's lucky that was knocked down because Dre Kirkpatrick read this play and might have even picked the thing off had it come all the way to Davon Smith. Alabama was ready for that play on second down. So now they find a third and six again. Neither team did well in their season openers on third down as Penn State was two out of ten, but we saw them pick up a third down at eight earlier. Right away, we talked about that offensive line, and Jimmy Okole, who was the starting right tackle, a senior, a fifth-year guy, just hobbled out of the game. So there's a replacement in the game already for Penn State on that offensive line and right tackle, and they're going to have to take another timeout. Oh, boy. And there you see Okole. Adam Gress has come in to take his spot. We'll take a timeout here just under 12 for remaining first quarter. Penn State driving, but they've got a big third down when we come back. We went down there last year, got a licking. Their fans were great, treated us well. All right, let's be good sportsmen tomorrow.
Now that doesn't mean we don't want to kick that, you know what? Joe usually apologizes to the ladies and then <laughs> yeah. says, you know what, anyway. And right now is Nippy Lines on a good looking opening drive. Eighth play coming up. Well, the two guys you got to really pay attention with with this Alabama defense are Hightower and Upshaw, and they'll line up in a lot of different places. All right, right now, this is Hightower and Upshaw is up here on the end. They're both on the end, going to rush the pass. They show blitz, and the inside hand off the red first down and more. Nice play call there on a third down and six. They got nine. Excellent play call. They put those two guys on the outside to get up the field and rush the passer. They knew Penn State had a new right tackle in the game. Watch these guys come up the field and they run right underneath them. They invited the rush up and they lead with the, the tackle pulls around and a nice play on third down and another conversion on a third and long for Penn State. Michael Zorlich comes in at fullback in front of Silas Red. As they Shuttled around on that offensive line with a Coley out. And he is red again. Nice second effort to get down to the 35 and pick up a four. Well, I'll tell you what, Brad, th at the start of the show, I said, would Penn State answer the challenge physically? They did not do it last year. They were not ready to play the style that Alabama was playing. They are right now. They're taking it to this Alabama defense. And the thing that Kirby Smart talked about with us, as well and you mentioned it earlier but this is the trouble area for Penn State a year ago when they get down around the 30 yard line they had three turnovers inside the tied 30 right now they're just outside the 35 and they go straight ahead with red and he's down close to the 31. Penn State's had to shovel up front because right tackle Chimo Coley's gone out with a right ankle injury but I saw him get up after the athletic trainer looked at him he put his shoe back on guys which is always a good sign I'll let you know if he's able to come back in but they've moved Deontay Pinnell their guard out to right tackle and put up John Urschel at right guard. All right Holly it's third down at two they've converted their third down so far and if they get inside the tied 30 they'll have another one. Red, he's close, but I don't think so. It looked like he was going to get it for sure, and then he got pushed back. I think Mark Barron's the guy that put the hammer down, and that happens to a lot of people that play Alabama. Now, Joe Paterno's up in the yeah. booth, and he's going to relay down to Mike McQuarrie and Tom Bradley, and the guys on the sideline, what they're going to do. There's Mike, former quarterback. And he's saying go. It's an interesting dynamic because not only is Joe Paterno up in the box, but Jay Paterno and Galen Hall, the two offensive coordinators and play callers, are also up in the box. So Mike McQuarrie is the receiver coach. He's down there on the field. And Tom Bradley, you could see, even though he's the defensive coordinator, he was getting over to take a look at how far the, they needed for the first down. Brandon Beecham's a little bigger tailback. He's in there right now. Oh, this is unbelievable. <laughs> this, there goes another timeout. Oh, delay the game. Beg your pardon. That's not going to help him. Still fourth down. I thought they got the timeout called. Uh, and that chain of command, that might have cost yeah. them that much time. Well, it, it's just different. You know, again, you've got your head coach upstairs. You've got your two play callers upstairs. Everything has to be communicated downstairs. And, uh, and you want to make sure you have the right play called because you've had a beautiful drive. Fourth down coming up. Yeah, and now you've got the question, you know, what what do they do here? I think they got the time they, they I called in time. I think it's still fourth down and one. Penn State called their third and final time They did. The Thank you very much. Penn State, Matt Austin. Their third and final time out. Thanks, Matt. That's what we were wondering about because there was some at, at you might have overheard them say delay of game, somebody down of the field, but they did get the timeout called just in time. So the timeouts are gone, but they still got a fourth down and one. Yeah, not very good job of, of and you can't really say clock management because it wasn't like they had to call timeout because they couldn't get the snap. They just didn't know how to get lined up. Yep. They didn't have the right personnel. Three plays so far early in the first quarter. So the good news, I guess, is it's in the first half and not in the second half that they lose all their timeouts. As they come back on the field, Brandon Beecham, I mentioned, is in a tailback. He's bigger, heavier than Silas Red. And they've also got Joe Suey in there, the fullback in front of him, who they do tend to use in short yardage situations. Here's a huge play in the opening quarter of this game. Fourth and a yard. It comes a blitz inside, and Bolden rolls with it, looking for the sticks. 
I don't know. He reached he the ball. It. He, he got reached it. the football, Brad, and I think that's what got him the first down. Boy, they put it right on the line, and now they do say first down. Another gutsy call wow. this opening possession by Penn State. No kidding. It looked like Barron was going to cut him off, but watch him reach the football across the first, the first down marker to assure the first down. It's where the ball is before his feet go out of bounds. Great play by Bolden. First down inside the 30, 11th play of the Penn State opening drive. And that Beecham goes for a couple. Beecham had a good game last week as well in the opener. Seven carries, an average about six every time he touched it. The current drive, 13 plays in over six minutes. Boy, talk about what a way to open. Yeah. On a gorgeous day, by the way, I was going to mention after Joe was talking at the pep rally, Dean DeVores, the PA guy, and he's also a meteorologist around here, he said there was a big storm center until Joe raised his cane <laughs> right at the pep rally, and then he said the two storms went in opposite directions. As you can see, it's sunny in about 75 right now. Silas Red right into the middle of the pot. No game this time. And now they're going to put themselves in that third and long situation that Todd has said they don't want to find themselves in against this defense. And again, last year when these teams played in Tuscaloosa, there were eight situations where it was third down and seven plus. They only converted one, and both of Rob Bolden's interceptions came in those situations. They got pressure and hit him as he released the football, and they got two interceptions in this part of the field last year. They did pick up a third and eight earlier on the drive. Can they do a third and seven here? Four receivers set as Bolden's in the gun. Flush from the pocket, throws on the run and low and incomplete. Intended for Justin Brown. And that'll bring out the field goal unit, which has been shaky at best for Penn State. So they drove in the length of the field, and now can they turn it into at least three points, or will a great-looking opening drive for yep. Penn State go all for naught if Evan Lewis can't hit the field goal? He's 0 for 2 on the season. They missed from 38 and 47 last week, and he also missed an extra point. This one will be from 43 yards out. Try to pick up his first three-pointer of the year. It would be big to end this opening drive. Lewis kick on the way, and it is good. Good-looking opening drive for the Nittany Lions. Taking the length of the field, they stall, but they get three with 7.34 remaining first quarter. ESPN's College Football on ABC. Brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. AT&T. Get it faster with 4G. Rethink possible. And Allstate. Dollar for dollar. Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. A lot of fun at Paternoville all week long. Got a little soggy out there at times with the rain that has hit this area and the flooding that goes with it. On a bright sunny day right now, though, Penn State goes 54 yards in 16 plays. 726, they used half the first half. Now, this is an area last week that Penn State struggled a little bit kicking off. So instead of Evan Lewis, it's Anthony Farah kicking off, who was didn't kick last week, a little bit in Joe Paterno's doghouse, but he is back this week. We're going to see him kick off a little stronger legs. He's got Dean Miller, Trent Richardson back deep for Alabama. Not only the starting tailback number three, but can really bring it on the returns. Bears kick. High, and Richardson's going to snag it at the six-yard line. And got out near the 30. 19-yard kick return for Trent Richardson. He'll stay right in there as we take a look at our Chick-fil-A impact players because he's one of them. 144 yards on the ground last year in the win in Tuscaloosa. You can't talk about their defense without talking about impact players on the other side. Dante Hightower, one of the best linebackers in the country and maybe the best safety. Two-time All-American Mark Barron is in the back end for the tie. And here's A.J. McCarron making his second start of this young season from the 25 yard line. Richardson, whoa, 
throw. Hit in the backfield, and he somehow got about three out of it. That was a head-on collision with Devin Still as we check in and get an update with Robert Flores. Robert. All right, Brett, Taco Bell Studio update. Wild game in Ames between Iowa and Iowa State. Double overtime when Iowa's James Vandenberg connects with Keenan Davis. He squirts into the end zone. They have kicked a field goal, and they lead by three. Iowa State can win it if they score a touchdown on their possession. Brad. Oh, big rivalry there. Here, Alabama going to the air and complete intended for Marquise Mays. And nice job by Michael Mowdy, the linebacker, to drop into coverage. Well, there's no question that this is a different Penn State team than Alabama faced last year. You saw it in the opening offensive drive, and you saw it in the first defensive play by Devon Still. And right now, third and long is what Penn State's defense wants to get Alabama in as well, with a young quarterback and his first big start on the road. And he's in an empty backfield right now with five receivers. Third down and eight. McCarron fires deep middle in and out of Marquise May's hands and the tie will have to punt. The ball was a little bit behind Marquise Mays, but two times Marquise Mays, who had such a big game last week with eight catches, was hit as soon as he dropped the ball. Watch the ball, a little behind, and then he gets peppered at the end of the play. Penn State's secondary very in tune to who the go-to guy is in this pass offense. So they're going to have to punt. Smith and Brown. Dual return man inside the 30-yard line from Cody Mandel. Oh, man, they got close to him. And it's a short kick, fair catch, called for and taken at the 37-yard line. 39-yard punt is off. Penn State, their defense holds. Their offense looked good on their opening drive. They lead by three. Tonight, the Wolverines play under the lights for the first time ever. The Big House Michigan hosts the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame College Football. Presented by Hampton Hotels on ESPN and ESPN3 tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. And also streaming live on WatchESPN.com and Watch ESPN app. Brad Nessler, Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe here at Beaver Stadium. Where we've got about 108,000 watching Penn State with an early lead on the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Second offensive possession in the pistol set. Red gets a handoff from Bolden and only got a couple. You know, last week when Penn State played Indiana State, they were so vanilla on offense. I mean, they, they actually ran the fullback 15 times. Right. I mean, they, everybody knew they weren't going to play that way against Alabama. And a lot of times that first possession, it takes the defense a little while to see what the team wants to do. And typically an offense will throw a lot of different stuff at you the first possession and then kind of settle into what they want to do. So I would fully expect to see Alabama's defense settle in a little bit better here because they are an outstanding defensive football team. Uh, Bolden has looked good so far today. Here he is on play action on the bootleg. And throws behind his intended receiver, Andrew Zerba, the tight end. That'll bring up third and long. Tight end Zerba was a question whether he would even play. He got dinged in the head a little bit last week. He was out of most of practice. He got cleared to play. And they need him. He's a real strong blocker on the edge. Went through that battery of tests. Yep. And when they think someone has a concussion, and got clearance, and as Todd said, a big target out there at 6'6", 265 pounds. Another third down conversions, two out of four. They're going to have to earn this one. Bolden, look out. Got rid of it to Red. He's got blockers in front. Uh-oh, he's got a first down and then some. He almost squirted out the backside. There's a flag down, though, at the 41-yard line. Might have a holding in the middle of that mess. But Red with great second effort would have had a first down unless this is against Penn State. Holding. Offense 54. 10 yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Repeat third down. Matt Stakowicz, the center. The pressure off the corner was so fast it almost didn't look like they were going to get that pass away. Yeah. And now they're going to be third down and a mile back at the 31-yard line. It was a perfect call again against the corner blitz. They threw the screen right into the area that was voided by Dequan Menzi. And Silas Red is running with some authority, whether he's catching it or running it from the tailback position. 
Third down at 16. Alabama's shown blitz. They back out of it. Bolden with time. Deep out and way out. Incomplete. Davon Smith was the closest guy, and Penn State will have to punt for the first time today. Alex Butterworth will come in. Marquise Mays will drop back deep. Marquise Mays. Eight punt returns in the season opener and a 12 yard average. And he might get a chance at this one. Runs up on the 32 and he's buried at the 32. Great hustle to get down to make the stop for no gain. Series history. Joe Paterno was Rip Engel's assistant the first time they played. And then in a national championship game, it was Barry Krause with a stop on Matt Gilman to give Bear Bryant a national championship. The last time they played here in State College in 89, blocked field goal in the final seconds. And then last year, it was Alabama rolling at home 24 to 3. This is the 15th time these teams have squared off. They had a long series starting when my partner was playing quarterback here at State College. Trent Richardson. So far, Sledden's been pretty tough. Joe Paterno never beat Bear Bryant. Had some great things to say about him yesterday and said he would be proud if he was still alive to see what Nick Saban has done with the Crimson Tide program. And there's the number four and nine all time against Alabama. A care and low snap, going to flare that. It's knocked up in the air by Jack Crawford. <laughs> Jack Crawford wants a penalty because A.J. McCarron grabbed him to keep him from intercepting the ball that he deflected. <laughs> a beautiful play by Crawford, timing his jump. He comes over the edge, gets a hand up, and then tries to go for the interception, and McCarron throws him out of the way. Wow, he had a pretty good call there. <laughs> Pass interference by the quarterback. That would be a good one, wouldn't it? Well, when the ball's tipped, there is no pass interference. <laughs> That's what he was looking for. Yeah. Third down at six. McCarron fires across the middle and throws a strike to Brandon Gibson. Let's just see if it's enough for the first down, though. Right at the marker. I think he's got it. Might have to be real come close. Measure. Yeah, real close. Alabama does a good job of running what people call stick routes, and that is you know, when it's third and seven or eight, they run routes that get the first down. They run to that distance, try to turn and catch the ball with enough after right at the catch to get the first down. Short by just the tape at the end of the links. They're going to run right to that marker. Now, certainly they don't see the yellow line, but they know where the first down marker is. And credit Penn State for being right there and not allowing the receiver, Gibson, to fall forward anymore after the catch. If there's any question whether Nick Saban would fool around at a fourth down at about four inches, yeah. there's his punter. This is the smart play. Yeah, you don't want to give this Penn State team and this crowd any more reason to get excited. they got enough ammo going yep. already. Again, Justin Brown and Davon Smith are both back deep. Take. And they pick up. He didn't get it. No, they didn't. Penn State picks it up. Smelly was the ball carrier. He thinks he got it. Penn State doesn't think so. I think they're going to have to measure again. Almost have to in this situation. Well, if they got it, they got it by a nose. They, they did not get it by much if they got it. Matt Austin, our referee, immediately said, I'm going to settle this thing by measurement. I'm not going to take a guess on something like this. See, he caught the ball five yards off the line of scrimmage, and he is hit right at the, the first down marker. Boy, this is huge. And first down by a nose, not even a half a nose. Your nose instead of mine. <laughs> Tell you what, I did not think that he got that. I thought Penn State was ready, and I thought they hit him, and I didn't see very much forward progress. There you see Smelly, the tight end, puts his head down. He got popped by Glenn Carson. 
And again, just barely. First down at the 4-1. Smelly stays in there at a two tight end set for Alabama. I think that might have fired the crowd up even more than if Penn State would have gotten the ball back. They are making some noise in the student section. And Richardson got two or three as we check in with Robert Flores. Well, Brad, the Cyhawk Trophy goes to the Iowa State Cyclones. James White ends it in triple overtime. Iowa playing their first triple OT game in school history. They lose in Ames 44 to 41. And Ohio State, despite getting outgained by Toledo, wins 27 to 22. Up next for the Buckeyes, a home game with Miami. Boy, a huge win for Iowa State in that long time rivalry. Richardson again. Well, last, a yard, that's about it. Yeah, last year, Trent Richardson played the bulk of the game. Mark Ingram was hurt. He had 144 yards. 93 of those yards came after contact. Penn State did a poor job tackling him, and you have to gang tackle him because he's big, he's strong, but he's built low to the ground. And so far, anyway, Penn State has done a great job of gang tackling Trent Richardson. And he's averaging about what he averaged in the season opener, about 2.8 a pop right now. As he comes out as an extra wide receiver. On third down at six. McCarron in the shotgun in an empty backfield. Deep middle and caught. What a catch by Marquise Mays right in front of Nick Suke. Wow. Nick Suke went for the interception and thought he had it. Watch him cut underneath the route of Marquise Mays. He thinks he's going to get the interception. He misses it, and tremendous concentration on the part of Mays as it goes through Suke's hands right into his own. Marquise Mays, the senior out of Birmingham, one of the best catches he's ever made in that uniform. Trying to fill the hole of Julio Jones, who's an Atlanta Falcon. Somebody's got to make those big plays, and he just made a big one. Right down the middle. McCarron blitz across the middle this time to Bell. And Bell rings it up for another first down near the 11 yard line. Pick up a 14. So the last two plays, chunks of 29 and 14 for the tide, and they're down in the red zone. A couple of nice throws by McCarron also. The post down the seam, and then the crossing route after he saw that Bell had gotten separation from Lynn. Did a nice job of leading his receiver. He's got a little less noise to deal with in the left end of the stadium because the student body's on the other end. He's in the pistol set with Richardson behind him. Penn State almost jumped, and now Richardson gets the call, and he stopped at the line of scrimmage. Gerald Hodges, the outside linebacker, closed in. Michael Mowdy, the other outside backer. Devin Still, the captain on the defensive line, all there to meet him. This is where the going gets a little more tough down here. Now this would suggest a play action down here, second and nine. Or even a screen to Richardson, potentially. All three receivers to the right and now Mays comes back in motion to the left side. There's the play fake, Todd called for. There's the throw, and it's complete to Mays inside the 10. And down near the five. Michael Mowdy got him down, but a pick up a six. This is an interesting down right now because it's third down, and they can get a first down at the two. A couple more, and they'd be in the end zone. We'll call it third and three. Just outside the five. McCarron again in a pistol set, but he's going to send Richardson in motion. Fires to the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. Michael Williams, the tight end. McCarron, good looking drive for him. Threw some strikes, including that one to his tight end for the touchdown. Well, take a look now. Here's the tight end right in the on the line of scrimmage. Smelly was in the slot. He goes out, and that's a beautiful throw right in between two linebackers. Hodges and Carson were closing in on the tight end, but McCarron really stuck it in there. I don't know how he snuck it in there. <laughs> that was a great throw, ending a 69-yard drive, and the extra point is good. So Alabama has answered Penn State's call to take the lead on the road. 
A.J. McCarron, some big throws to Marquise Mays and Kenny Bell, and then to his big tight end, Michael Williams. Bama leads 7-3. Alabama on the road with a lead now, 7-3. Our college football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. A.J. McCarron, five out of six for 59 yards on that drive. Two big third down completions. And then he really threw a strike to Williams for the touchdown. And you know, after the fake punt was successful, it was almost like McCarron just got a new sense of confidence yeah. in that whole offense because they were kind of struggling a little bit before that play. And then all of a sudden he got hot and made a couple big time throws. You can tell he's even sitting taller in the saddle down there on the bench right now. Getting congratulated by his teammates. So now Chaz Powell and Davon Smith await the kick. Kate Foster. Davon Smith will take it at the nine. And only got to the 19 or 20. Good coverage. Alex Watkins got down there to make the stop. So now we see Matt McGloin. We expected both quarterbacks. We expected two series out of Bolden and then going to McGloin. Bolden played real well. Todd, is this the right thing to do? I guess you told the guys this is how we're going to play. Yeah, I think you have to stick with what your plan was going in, even though Rob did look much more confident, much more decisive than he did last year against Alabama. And what Matt McGloin brings, he's got a little swagger. He's got a lot of confidence in himself, and he's got very good field awareness. Uh, he doesn't have as big an arm as Bolden, but he's got excellent awareness in the pocket. We'll set him up at the 19. Quick slant is behind Moyes, intended receiver. And it was tipped, I think, by Mosley. So his opening throw is incomplete. The last time Matt McGloin faced an SEC defense, it didn't go so well for him <laughs> against Florida in no. the bowl game. Five interceptions. 17 for 41 on that day. In fact, the Penn State quarterbacks in their last two matchups against SEC teams, not good at all. Everybody else, not bad, but not against the SEC in Alabama and Florida. Oh, and now Red's leveled. And now that Alabama defense led by Mark Barron starting to get fired up because they know they've got Penn State deep in their own end. Well, and again, that first drive, they saw some new things. They had to adjust on the fly. But when you have a veteran defense, you can make those adjustments. They look settled in now. Good hard-hitting first quarter. Number three, Alabama on the road, leading number 23, Penn State. 7-3 here in Happy Valley. Second quarter, Alabama leading Penn State. And Penn State with a third down and nine to open up the second quarter. It's the fourth time in the game now they've been third and seven or longer. They converted one of their first three, but haven't been so successful since then. And again, this is the play, this is the time when Alabama's defense really makes it tough. Matt McGloin again is in at quarterback. And they're going to come with a pressure on McGloin. Throws and incomplete intended for Smith. And Smith gets tangled up there with Dre Kirkpatrick. Fans were looking for a penalty. Don't get one. Now there was a lot of uh, body contact and arm contact while the ball was in the air. Watch the top of the screen. Dave, Dre Kirkpatrick on Smith. The ball's in the air when they're still battling in there, and that could have been called something against Kirkpatrick. And had Smith turned around, that pass was pretty close to being on the money. Butterworth now to kick near his own five. Alabama might bring some heat on the punt. They did, but he got it away. And a fair catch called for and taken just inside the 45-yard line. Alabama is going to have good starting field position. Well, coming up tomorrow, Sunday NFL countdown expands to three hours and moves to a new time slot. Boomer, TJ, Mike Ditka, Chris Carter, Keyshawn Johnson, Bill Parcells. Three hours of inside and analysis to get you ready for the first Sunday of the 2011 season. NFL countdown tomorrow, new time, 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. With Todd Blackledge and Holly Rowe and our ABC on ESPN crew, Brad Nessler with you from Beaver Stadium, where the Tide leads 7-3, and they take over at their own 44-yard line. Eddie Lacy's in the lineup for the first time today. At tailback, and he flanks A.J. McCarron in the gun. 
McCarron with the quick outs. Got it to Smelly, the tight end. Nice gain into Penn State territory as we check in with Robert Flores. Robert. Hey, Brad, for a second consecutive week, Auburn gets a close call. Hosting Mississippi State, 10 seconds to go. Chris Relf stopped inside the one by Ryan Smith. Auburn beats number 16, Mississippi State, 41 to 34. Brett. Big game in the SEC. I thought Mississippi State would get that one today. Auburn hangs on. They're living the dream so far through two weeks. Second down and a couple. And it's Lacey. Cutting it outside, puts his head down. And he's going to be about a yard shy. Gerald Hodges, nice job by the outside linebacker. Knock him out of bounds. Trent Richardson on the sideline. We expected to see Lacey. A little bit taller. Maybe a little more wiggle to him. He had a good game last week in the opener. Actually more yardage than Richardson had. It's a really big third down and one for the Penn State defense. They spread him out now and put Brandon Lewis in as a big fullback in front of Lacey. He'll lead the way. Lacey's got a first down. Picked up five. Let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, coming into this game, Alabama was in a similar situation to Penn State, rotating two quarterbacks with A.J. McCarron and Phillip Sims. But Nick Saban made the decision this week that he wanted continuity in this game for his offense in a very hostile environment. He was quick to point out that there's still competition at the quarterback position. They said normally their starter would get 75% of the reps in practice, but they are split right down the middle. But today is a rare situation. They want McCarron just so everybody's on the same page. Ledge, he's handled it beautifully so far, I think. Yeah. Yeah, he really has. Here comes a blitz. Screen pass should be the right play for Lacey. And a nice job, though, by Jordan Hill, who is one of our impact players, to get in there from defensive tackle and make the stop. You know, when I watched the film of their game the first week, I, I thought A.J. McCarron played uh, better than Phillip Sims. I mean, he looked like he was a step ahead in his decision making, played with a little bit more poise. He had 10 possessions or five touchdowns. He did throw two interceptions, but I, I understand what Nick Saban has saw in him and why he's going with one guy in this kind of an environment. McCarron's hit his last seven passes. This time he hands it off. A good tough run again, this time by Trent Richardson, who just checked back in there on a second down and four. And he's got the first down. Yeah, and a couple runs on behind that right side now. Anthony Steen, the right guard, and big DJ Fluker, the right tackle. One of the biggest guys in college football at six foot six, 340 pounds. You don't want to give Trent Richardson a head of steam because he looks like he's a little more warmed up. You saw him clapping after that last run to pick up the first down. Tom Bradley, defensive coordinator for Penn State, says, you know, he'll get four, four, then 12, then 20, then a touchdown. So you got to watch out about getting number three warmed up. First and 10 just outside the Nittany Lion, 30. On the stretch play, it's Richardson. And there he goes on one of those runs that I just talked about. All the way down inside the 10. 22 on that one. Well, this time they went to the other way. They went to the left. Behind the left tackle, Barrett Jones, and number 17, Brad Smelly, the tight end. Look at the tight end's block. Holds right on his man. Motti is blocked by the tackle, Barrett Jones. And you mentioned it. Once he gets into the second level of your defense, he is a difficult guy to tackle at 225 pounds. Alabama, first and goal at the Penn State eight-yard line with a 7-3 lead. Richardson fights his way to the six, got two. Kyrie Fort made the stop defensively, number 11, the inside linebacker. Right now, just outside the five-yard line, if you're thinking about play action, this would be the spot, maybe. McCarron comes back into the huddle. The only thing I wonder about that is they've got this Penn State defense on their heels a little bit with the running game. And you mentioned Trent Richardson is getting warmed up a little bit. They're in the gun, but Richardson's right to McCarron's right hand. It's just a straight drop and a throw to the end zone, and it's over. 
the head of the intended receiver and Kyrie Fort might have got a hand on it. I'm not sure. He went airborne to make the throw high anyway from McCarran. The only reason I didn't like that call is because you had some momentum running the football and it was second down. And now it's third down and you almost have to throw in this situation. And Penn State will be a little bit more in tune to it. And the element of surprise on play action is gone. Or you would assume it is. Now the student body getting into it down there. Nick Saban wants a timeout. Yep. Alabama will take a timeout on a vital timeout third Alabama. and goal. The first time out of the half. It'll be a 30 second timeout. 10.54 remaining in the quarter. And this is a vital time right now for Alabama. They don't want to, they don't want to miss an opportunity here. On the road with a chance to maybe go up 14 to 3. And though Penn State Todd early and on their opening drive was very impressive. Yeah. They got stuck with the field goal. Alabama takes it down and McCarron's played really well and now if they get another one here they're yeah. going to have it rolling their way. Well McCarron settled down and played well and more importantly that Alabama defense that returned 10 starters that we think could be as good as any defense in the country. They settled down. They got a couple stops. They got good field position for the offense and again by doing so they've quieted this 108,000 people. As you well. talk about eight guys on their defense. Todd McShay our own Todd McShay at ESPN claims that Alabama's got eight guys on their defense that are in the top 150 prospects to go in the National Football League. <laughs> uh, so they basically got an NFL defense out there. Right now, Penn State trying to come up with a defensive stop of their own. On a third down and goal. Big, big play for the Nittany Lion defense. McCarron in the shotgun. Here comes the pressure. He's flushed out of the pocket. He's going to have to tuck it, and he won't get anywhere except to the four-yard line. Nice job in coverage and with the rush by Penn State. Devin Steele and Michael Maude bring him down, and Alabama will be held to a field goal try. Big stop for the Penn State defense. They needed to, to hold them to a field goal attempt. And Jeremy Shelley will come in to try it. McCarron to hold. Shelley's two for two on the year. There's his numbers from last season. 22-yard field goal attempt to try to make it a touchdown difference. Kick on the way, and he just tucked it inside the right upright. Field goal is good. Alabama and Nick Saban add to their lead. 10-08 remaining first quarter, and now 10-3 Alabama. That's the last chance for drivers to make the chase of the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Tony Stewart fighting for their postseason lives. And Danny Hamlin and Paul Menard look for a victory to lock their spot on the chase. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Richmond tonight. Coverage starts basically when we're done playing football here, 7 o'clock Eastern time. So after a 52-yard drive, Penn State's defense comes up with a stop and forces the field goal by Shelley. Alabama 10. Penn State three, just over 10 minutes remaining in the second quarter. Cade Foster set to kick away to Chaz Powell and Davon Smith. Again, Powell's got two career kick returns for touchdowns, including one in the opener last week. These guys have kind of fought over these returns the first couple of kicks. Let's see if we have a decisive choice here. It's going to be Chaz Powell at the 10. The return on to the right, and now he cuts back in the middle, and he only got to the 20-yard line. D. Milner, nice job on the special teams to make the stop. Well, the guys on this defense, Courtney Upshaw, a linebacker, who's 270 pounds. You've got Dante Hightower, who's 265 pounds. And then you've got the safety, Mark Barron, who's 220 pounds. These three guys are the heart and soul of this defense, and they may be at their position as good as anybody in college football. So that's what you're dealing with if you're an offense going against these guys. And not only are they talented, they play hard every play, and they're, they're so experienced. They've played so much ball, they understand this defense inside and out. Almost not fair having linebackers that weigh 270 pounds. McGloin on the give to Red. Got four. 
Penn State trying to reestablish their ground game with Silas Red. Well, and again, first down is so critical to be successful against this defense. Now, I love passing on first down, but if you come up incomplete throwing on first down and it's second and ten, you are behind schedule against this defense. So a run for four yards is a huge win. Here's Penn State going no huddle for the first time this afternoon. Again, they're in the eye with Suey, the fullback. Second down at six. Like a little bit of confusion in the backfield. Mm -hmm. Red only got about a yard. Looked like uh, McGoin was turning one way and he was going the other. Well, Alabama does a good job of waiting until you get set and maybe make a check and then switching to a different defense. And I think what happened to Matt McGloin there was he wanted to check again and realized he didn't have time and they had a negative play. He did a pretty good job just to get over there to get the hand off. There's Bolden who started the game. It was very impressive on the opening drive that netted the field goal and gave him a three nothing lead. McGloin, the junior out of Scranton, Pennsylvania. Now he's going to set up Joe Suey to his right, which is where the pressure is coming from. McGloin fires and trying to tuck it in there and it's incomplete as Dre Kirkpatrick makes a nice play on the ball to knock it down. Well, you can just feel this Alabama defense like a boa constrictor starting to <laughs> tighten up on this, Al on this Penn State offense. And that time, even if the ball was caught, it was going to be short of the first down marker. And that's, that's what this defense does to you. They squeeze you, and they don't give you any free plays. The restrictors. I like that. Is their <laughs> defensive name. Marquise Mays waiting on the kick from Alex Butterworth. Third straight time Penn State held without a first down. And this point takes a Penn State bounce. Very good one inside the 30 yard line. That's where Alabama will have it leading by a touchdown. We've got 824 remaining in the first half with Alabama in front by seven. ESPN's college football on ABC brought to you by Dr. Pepper. With 23 flavors, Dr. Pepper is always one of a kind. Ford, Drive One, and Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. From Mount Nittany in the background and into Beaver Stadium in front of 108,000, Alabama leads 10-3. Coach's Trophy is here. Presented by Dr. Pepper, all leads up for the All-State BCS National Championship game. Wouldn't these two teams love to be there? A lot of people think Alabama's got the power to be. They came in ranked third in the country against number 23 Penn State. They've got the lead as they start this drive here with 824 to go in the half. Oh, Trent Richardson's level by Devin Still. Now similar to the first play of the game. A handoff by to Trent Richardson. Devin Still quick off the line of scrimmage and into the backfield for a big play. He's going to come right through the guard. And right into the face of Trent Richardson. <laughs> that is a quick big man making a big play behind the ball. Loss of five. Second down at 15. McCarron with three wide receivers. Penn State showing blitz. They back out of it. They'll go with a quick opening draw to Richardson. And he only got a couple. And now. Penn State's defense has got Alabama right where they want them. Evan Still has had a huge first half. The captain of the defense, 310 pounder out of Wilmington, Delaware. Right now he's going to go out. They're going to bring in their pass run group and their nickel package because it's third and 13. And if you're A.J. McCarron here, now you have settled down. You've got to be smart with the football here on third and 12. Marquise Mays has been his big play receiver. You see him in motion toward the line of scrimmage. The pass is out in the flat to Richardson. He turns around and sees nothing but a pride of line. Led by Nate Stuper. And Alabama's got to kick it. Not only was that a good stop for Penn State, but it should give them decent field position after the punt here. And again, in a game like this with two defenses playing pretty well, field position is critical, and that's all the, the business of the special teams. Mandel to punt. 
around his own 15 yard line. High snap. And a bad punt off the side of his foot. But it takes an Alabama roll. It's going to be scooped up by Justin Brown. And somebody called fair catch, I think. So I believe that's the call anyway. They blow the play dead at the 29 yard line. Jazz Powell's out there talking to the official. And Matt Austin says timeout. We'll take it along with him. 618 remaining in the first half. Defensive affair on both sides of the ball here at Beaver Stadium. A little over six minutes remaining till halftime and time for our AFLAC trivia question for today. How many Alabama head coaches have taken the field for the Tide since Joe Paterno became Penn State's head coach? Think it over. There's one of them. There's Joe, all 402 wins. If you're wondering where the glasses are, Joe is nearsighted, so he can see the field fine without the legendary glasses that so many people don around here as sunglasses. At the 29, Bolden back in and has it batted down at the line of scrimmage on a first and 10. Now, again, after that first drive where Penn State gained 54 yards, the last three drives have only netted of 10 yards, and you can just feel that Alabama defense settling in. And again, Throwing on first down, you have to do that some, but you better complete it because second and 10 puts you in a difficult situation. That was Jesse Williams, the junior college transfer, that knocked that one down. And now Bolden will give himself a little more room to see what's coming in the shotgun on second down. And it's a draw coming back the other way, and it's a loss of a yard as Reds drop by Mosley. Now they find themselves in a third and double digit situation. Getting the ball back and forcing Alabama on a three and out and a short punt. Yeah. And they're not doing anything with it yet. And again, it gets back when you have incomplete or a negative play on first down, it just puts you off schedule so much against this defense. Derek Moy, their biggest receiver, has only had one pass aimed his way so far. Bolden down the middle. Complete. And he got it to Justin Brown for the first down. It was a big time throw by Rob Bolden because he had pressure coming from Courtney Upshaw right up into his face. And again, this is 274 pounds coming at you. And he hung in there as long as he could and made a big time throw on third and long. And regardless now what goes on on this drive, they just used some clock. They moved it out to the yep. 41. Even if they have to punt, they're That's in a right. lot better situation than they would have been. Joe Suey again in there at fullback. They use him as a receiver at times. Reds behind him on a first down. And Bolden's going to throw. Lost it down the sideline. Incomplete. Intended for Derek Moy. See, this is what Alabama does to you. And, and this is Nick Saban's influence. They show you a defense and they get you to change the play. And then as soon as you change the play, they switch also. So they show blitz. Rob Bolton checked to a quick throw, thinking he'd have man-to-man -man coverage against a blitz. And then Alabama jumped out of it, and he had nowhere to go with the football. And again, now it's second and 10. And luckily, he threw it wide enough down that sideline that Alabama didn't come up with the interception. He's got three receivers here on second down and 10 at the 41-yard line. Bolden's going to roll and throw on the run and almost caught by Davon Smith. But Dre Kirkpatrick says, uh-uh. He's done a nice job on that corner. Dre Kirkpatrick. Free season All-America choice by some people. Holly? Well, this is something you don't want to see if you're an Alabama fan. Courtney Upshaw, number 41, just taking himself out of the game right now. On the previous plays, guys, he was hit in the back. I saw them treating his upper left hip area kind of on the back of him. They were putting what looked like some of that icy hot rub or stuff on it, but he's an obvious pain guy. He's just jogged off the field. That's a huge loss for the Alabama defense. His replacement, a redshirt freshman. We'll see how he does. All right. Upshaw, one of the captains of the defense that Todd talked about a few moments ago. Bolden in the pocket, fires across the middle, got his tight end, and the ball comes out. Alabama's got it. Unless the play was blown dead. We got one official with his foot yeah. on a first down. We got Alabama with the ball in their hands, Daquan Menzi. And now the referee comes over, and Mike McQuarrie says, somebody make a call. Well, the ground can't cause a fumble. 
And so the question is, was he down before the ball came out, or did the ball come out as he was going to the ground? The head linesman is saying that he was down. Oh, boy. I don't know. Looked like it was out. Kirkpatrick made the hit right on the ball. Yeah, from that angle, it looks like a fumble. And yep. again, Zerba did not have any contact all week, remember, because of the head Moving injury. Moving on the field is the ball carrier's knee was on the ground before the ball came out. Before the runner is down, it results in a first down. And Penn State wants to try to get this ball snapped as quick as possible. Uh, Mike McQuarrie is saying, get up there. Under further review. Yeah. And the play is going to be reviewed. Dick Honig is our replay official. And my guess is this one's turning around, Todd, although the, the call on the field was a completion and down by contact with the ground. So now Matt Austin comes over to put the headset on with an official review going on. This is a critical play because as you just mentioned, even if Penn State doesn't score on this drive, they've flipped the field even if they have to punt the football. But if this is a turnover, as it looks like, then Alabama is going to not only get the ball, but they're going to be right back in good field position again. So a critical play and a critical call coming up. I'm going to say I don't even think it's close. I mean, his knees are not even on, near the ground. Oh. I, mean, it, yeah, I don't think that could be anything but an interception. I think we're going to have a reversal. I mean, yeah, you could have said his shoulder was on the ground, but yeah. even his shoulder was off the ground when the ball came out. He sure looked airborne completely when the ball was in the air and Alabama was all over it. You know, Drake Kirkpatrick was just trying to go low on a bigger target, and yeah. he just, fortunately for him, got his helmet right on the football. Just talking about him being on some preseason list as an All-American, one of those star players on that star-studded Alabama defense. Yeah, He's had a lot of big plays already today in the first half. Yeah, we featured Hightower, Upshaw, and Barron, but <laughs> at his position, he might be as good as yeah. there is also. So we await the official review. Joe Paterno does from the booth. Nick Saban does from the field. Matt Austin's going to have the call for us here with 441 remaining in the half. Now, I think whichever team gets this call, the play to go with would be a play action to take a shot deep. I think if Alabama gets it, you try to stick a stake in them right now with a big play. If Penn State gets the call, At they the go review, deep. The ruling on the field is the ball was fumbled before the runner was down, and there was a clear recovery by Alabama. It'll be Alabama's ball, first and 10 at the 50. That's why we have reviews. Yeah, that's the right call. So a big play by the Alabama defense and what would have been a first down in Alabama territory, but instead they hit there. Zerba, the ball out before his shoulder or any part of his body even touched, and then the recovery by the swarming Alabama defense, and they've got it right on the midfield strike. Now Marquise Mays, who has been their go-to guy, is at the top of the screen. This is him right up here. First down following the turnover. McCarron in the shotgun. He's looking Mays' way, but he's going to have to come up short to Trent Richardson, his safety valve. And Richardson got about six before he lost his helmet on the hit by Michael Maury. See, this is what McCarron did not do last week in the first game. This was a call to throw the ball down the field. But watch McCarron. As he comes back, he's going to see the pressure means I can't wait for the play down the field. Still gets in there, so he dumps it off to his outlet receiver, Richardson. He didn't do it last week. He did it today. They got a good gain out of it. Seven yards, second and three as we approach the four-minute mark. Jim McCarron stays in the gun. Pressure coming off the corner from Penn State's defense. Zips it down the middle. What a nice play by Michael Mowdy, the linebacker. Mowdy, who's dead, rich, was a wide receiver here and then played in the NFL. And he's got that football gene that so many Penn State players, as Joe Paterno's coached so many father and son combinations. And boy, on the end of that, talk about laying a lick by Nick Suke. Watch this. After the play and after the deflection, he let the intended receiver have him. Here's the biggest third down of the game so far. And the Penn State crowd knows it. That's Mays that was in motion. Now he sets up. A uh, wing to the right on third down and three. McCarron, the quick throw is complete. Got it out. And a first down to Kevin Norwood. That's his first catch of the day. 
But Karen looks very poised today. You know, uh, on the road, first big test, a much different opponent than he faced last week in Kent State, and he looks very decisive with the football. You know, everybody's saying, well, what do you mean? It's his first start. Who did he take over? Greg McElroy was 24 and 3 as a starter at Alabama, and he's on injured reserve right now, the New York Jets. And so there was a lot of leadership. This guy might have a considerably bigger arm than Greg, but nobody's got more brains than McElroy had running the show. First down at the 37. Here's the stretch to Richardson. Nice run by Trent Richardson, one of the best he's had. Five yard pickup. We check in with Robert Flores. Hey, Brad, right now Duke is giving Stanford all they can handle on ESPNU. Cardinal up 10 0 until Andrew Luck is picked off by Lee Butler, who takes it the other way. Blue Devils have lost 42 consecutive games against ranked opponents, but late in the first half, they're down just three. Meantime, East Carolina up on Virginia Tech, 7-0. That one also late in the first half. All right, Robert, thanks. Keep us posted. Second and five here. Alabama with a touchdown lead, trying to add to it before halftime. And it's Richardson weaving his way near the first down marker, but a yard shy with two and a half to go in the half. So a big third down. It's like the crowd just took a big deep breath thinking, okay, we got to really go here on third and one. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the student section in the end zone. Now the pom-poms come out. As soon as Alabama breaks the huddle, the noise will begin again. Picked up their last third down on a quick throw by McCarron. This time he's under center with Trent Richardson behind him. And he's going to roll the throw to Richardson. Got it to him, and he got the first down and then some. Diving forward near the 22-yard line. Well, third and one. Everybody's expecting a handoff to Richardson. I think Nick Saban and Jim McElwain are thinking we'll go for it on fourth down if we don't make it. So let's go play action. Maybe we can get a big play, but a smart decision again. Get the first down and then get a new set of downs with the catch by Richardson. Richardson, a good receiver. About 23 passes last year, four of them for touchdowns. Seventh play of the drive. Third down passing. A.J. McCarron's been spot on. Here he is on first down to Richardson again. And he's brought down by Jordan Hill. Can't stress to you enough how important that little throw is. You look downfield, and the rule of thumb for a quarterback is you look deep to short. So the routes downfield, you look. If it's not there, dump it down to a, an outlet receiver, and you get eight yards. Second down at short. McCarron looks to his right and fires to the end zone and almost intercepted it was intended for Smelly and Mike Hall the outside linebacker got a hand on it boy how big is this ledge we're under a minute here's the throw again but go back to the fumble yeah Penn State would have been in Alabama's end they may not have gotten points but they would have pinned him with a punt but now they're trying to prevent more scoring here third down and three Alabama Last time on third and short, they threw to Richardson. That's smelly in motion. McCarron to the middle and inside the five. It's first and goal to Kevin Norwood. And again, McCarron threw a strike and a 12-yard pickup. Well, let's credit this offensive line for Alabama, too, because McCarron has got a lot of time to sit in the pocket and read down the field. He moves slightly to get a better window. And then again, right on the mark with that third down pass. And it's first and goal. McCarron has hit five different receivers on third down. This 47-yard drive has got him set up maybe for another touchdown here. Trent Richardson on the carry. And he's in. Touchdown. Tied. Well, you can't do it much better than that for Alabama. You, you get the turnover. You move the ball down the field you score and you use clock you lose, use clock and you get the football first to start the second half so momentum is all on Alabama's side right now Brent Richards his fourth rushing touchdown of this Previous young season is under further review we're going to take a look at the last play Richardson's touchdown run as it was called on the field 
50 yard march in a little over four minutes. Two really critical plays that have turned this game so far in the first half. The first one was the fake punt that Alabama went for that led to their first touchdown. So we take a look at this Richardson run again and then the turnover there that, that gave Alabama the ball right here at the end of the first half. Yeah, there's no doubt. I don't think on that one either. You can see Richardson half his body and both officials right on the goal line immediately signaled touchdown. But much like the uh, fumble that led to this score, they're wisely looking upstairs to the replay officials. 35 seconds remaining in the half. Alabama an extra point away from a two touchdown lead here late in the second quarter. Well, one thing Trent Richardson does know how to do is find the end zone. Last week he didn't have good numbers, 37 yards on 13 carries, but three touchdowns. After review, the ruling on the field stands, touchdown. Very methodical that time. Yeah. Good running by Richardson. They were three for three on third downs, but get this. Two of the third downs were third and three, and one of them was third and one. And so, on the third and one, they threw it to Richardson. Yeah. yeah. Mixing it up nicely. Jim McElwain in the offense. Spotting the number three team in the country, a two touchdown lead before halftime is not what Penn State was hoping for after they had the opening three on their opening drive. So 17 unanswered points if the Shelley extra point goes through. And it does. 35 seconds remaining in the half. It's quiet in the crowd, that's for sure. Tied rolling right now, 17 3 on Penn State. A little bit earlier in this quarter, we asked you our trivia question for the day, and it was, how many Alabama head coaches have taken the field for the Tide since Joe Paterno became the Penn State head coach? We gave you time to think it over. There was eight. Bear Bryant, Ray Perkins, Bill Curry, Gene Stallings, Mike DeBose, Dennis Francione, Mike Shula, and now Nick Saban. The reason we asked that, because Mike Price made a pit stop in Tuscaloosa there just for a little while. Or it would have been nine. There have been 855 coaching changes in college football. 885, I beg your pardon, since Joe Paterno took over as head man. That's a lot of changes. <laughs> and the score just changed again on that touchdown run by Trent Richardson. 17 to 3 now. And remember, unless they get a great punt return, a kick return rather, by Penn State. I don't think the Nittany Lions are going to get too cute because they used all their timeouts way earlier in this half. Davon Smith from the 10 yard line. And he gets peppered at about the 21. Nice coverage by Alabama as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. On the fake punt, Smelly was given. The first down by the nose of the football. That led to a touchdown as Michael Williams, the other tight end, scored. And then, speaking of tight end, Serba with the fumble, and that just led to a 50-yard drive and Trent Richardson's three-yard touchdown. Two huge plays there that changed the complexion of this first half. Yeah, that fake punt, ever since that play, A.J. McCarron just really woke up at quarterback. They're going to let Bolden throw at least a middle screen, but he overshot everybody. And try to sneak one out there to Silas Red, and he really never found a spot to catch the ball. Now the problem for Penn State after that first drive is they started to not have any success on first down. They, they averaged right around two yards per play on first down for this entire first half. And again, against this defense, it's very difficult. Their quarterbacks throwing the football one for six on first down. And, and that leads to second and 10, and that leads to trouble against this defense. And that leads to a counter play to Red. They tried this one earlier, didn't get much. This time they got about seven, but the clock will wind down, and that might be it for the first half. So Penn State. Their opening drive took them basically the length of the field. They had to settle for a field goal. They were in Alabama territory before service fumble again. And that turned in to an Alabama touchdown late in the second quarter. And that's where we're going to be at halftime. 
Number three Alabama here on the road their fans mostly in the upper left end zone cheering their team as they lead by two touchdowns and we check in with Holly. Well Coach Saban let me take you back to just your second possession of the game. What factors did you consider before you put that fake punt on. Well we missed a hole on the punt the guy ran an inside a double team or would have had a, 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 a good play and uh, I just felt like we weren't doing much offensively. We need to change the momentum of the game and even though we didn't run the play right we lucked out and got a first down and led to a scoring drive. Coach after that first drive Penn State was moving it down the field. They had up a lot of time on the clock. What changed about your defense that really locked down. Well, You know we get a lot of stuff that's different than what we've seen and what we practiced and I think you know you just got to get through the script with your players and settle them down and kind of go through the adjustments and the things that they need to do and you know, once we did that I think we played a little better and just quickly coach what do you like about A.G. McCarron's composure so far. He's done a good job in the game. He's taken what they give him and that's what he has to continue to do. Thanks coach. All right, thank you. He's handled that first half very well. A.J. McCarron with a tough job on the road. He's done it very well. Alabama leads at halftime 17 to 3. Cooper Tires halftime report is coming up in a moment. It's a white house in Happy Valley at Beaver Stadium. Richardson, whoa! Gonna flare it out. It's knocked up in the air by Jack Crawford. Well, there's no question that this is a different Penn State team than Alabama faced last year. Fires to the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. And we welcome you back to ESPN on ABC's College Football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Sunshine, over 108,000 fans at Beaver Stadium. But they saw a good opening drive by their Nittany Lions, and then the Alabama defense took over. You can see the average gain on first down. Penn State has been shut down since that opening drive netted them the first three points of the ball game. 17 unanswered points by Alabama since, and they basically have doubled in total yardage what Penn State's been able to do. Brad Nessler and Todd Blackledge back. Holly Rose somewhere down in there. Sunshine. You know, I know everybody says game of inches, a couple plays here and there. Well, the fake yeah, punt, punt by yeah. that much. Right. They got a first down, and then Serba fumbling by that much. Yeah. Alabama got it back and took it in, and that's been the story of the ball game. Well, you know, Nick Saban was disappointed last week because they threw four interceptions, and they put the ball on the ground five times, and only lost one fumble. Well, they protected the ball today, and that turnover right at the end of the first half was critical because 10 to 3 at halftime for Penn State is a whole different deal yeah. than 17 to 3 against a team this good on defense. Uh, this good on defense and that's been the story so far that, that opening drive they have settled in and they become the monster we know they are. Yeah I mean they're just strong in every level and again after that first drive Nick Saban told Holly they had to make some adjustments and settle down and when you have so many veterans on your defense it's easy to make those adjustments and not panic and that's what they did they just started to squeeze this Penn State offense after uh, after that first drive. I know you talked to Joe Paterno at halftime. Yeah he was a little disappointed that his receivers didn't play as aggressive as he wants them to. He thought they were a little intimidated by this Alabama defense and he just thinks they need to play better. I think he wants to see a little bit more of Matt McGloin in the second half. Uh, but you know he's one of those guys where he said hey you know those turnovers you talk about them all the time yep. that turnover right at the end of the half was a critical one for us. They had three big ones last year in Tuscaloosa and a couple of situations here where they've given Alabama the edge and the lead and the football to start the third quarter as D Milner and Trent Richardson go back deep. Dante Hightower and company they've been sensational since that opening march by the Nittany Lions. So we'll see if Penn State at home can come back against the number three team in the land. Ferris kick down to the one yard line. And it's Milner across the 20 trying to bounce it outside. He'll be level at about the 22. You know you mentioned the fake punt and, and ever since the fake punt A.J. McCarron just kind of settled in and, and locked in on offense. Now credit that offensive line for giving him excellent protection. He was not sacked in the first half. 13 of 19, 110 yards, and he completed passes to eight different guys. So that tells me he's seen the field, he's comfortable, he's relaxed, and he's confident throwing the football. And uh, I don't think that Nick Saban and Jim McElwain could have had expected anything better out of A.J. McCarron than they got in that first half. There's his numbers 110 yards no mistakes. Here comes a blitz on 
First down, and McCairns flushed out of the pocket, will throw on the run and completed it to Williams. And they got five out of that as we check in with Holly. Well, guys, well, the first half was winding down over here on the Penn State sideline. Things were pretty subdued. It was like the air was starting to go out a little bit. But when they just came out onto the field and were in that tunnel, they started chanting, jumping around, and they had a lot of juice coming out. There's still a lot of energy left in these Nittany lines. But some of the guys on the sidelines here were talking. They said they'd like to see one of their quarterbacks get in a rhythm like A.J. McCarron of Alabama has. They don't care who it is, just somebody who can get in a rhythm. Here's McCarron on a handoff. Richardson hit. Only a yard gain. Nice job. Drew Aston Reno, the captain and the secondary leader back there, made the stop, and it brings up third down. So they could force a three and out here to open things up in the third quarter. They'd be in good shape. Well, not only would they be in good shape, they would also get this crowd back in the game. Right. And, and they need to do that. They need to give this crowd something to get excited about. There's where the student section's got to come into play as you look at them. From one end zone to the other. They're right behind A.J. McCarron. He's got a third and four. Marquise Mays in motion. And McCarron from the shotgun has it batted in the air. And much like earlier by Jack Crawford, it's Eric Lattimore this time. So they do force the punt. Well, sometimes when you have a running back blocking against a defensive end, it's a mismatch, and Trent Richardson tried to cut him out his legs and went right between his legs. And Lattimore did a nice job of maintaining his balance and getting a hand on the football. Cody Mandel to punt, and Davon Smith and Justin Brown wait on the other end. So the defense did its job. Let's see if the special teams can come up with a play. Kick is high and short. Fair catch taken at the 38-yard line by Justin Brown. So only a 34-yard punt, no return. Sunday NFL Countdown returns though tomorrow and it's expanded to three hours. Chris and TJ and Mike, Chris, Keyshawn and Bill. Three hours of insight and analysis for you getting ready for the first Sunday of the 11th season. And on ESPN2 tomorrow morning, outside the lines, followed by the Sports Reporter, Sports Center at 11, and Fantasy Football Now at 11.30. It's a big day on ESPN and ESPN2 tomorrow morning. This is the guy that's got to get going for Penn State. Derek Moy, very quiet. Here's Bolden on play action, and the pass is complete to Derek Moore. Right on cue from Todd Blackledge in a pickup of 11. That's his first catch. He's too good of a player and too talented of a guy to go through a first half and be invisible. And uh, they've got to get some production out of him, and it's a good way to start the second half with a nice throw and catch. He's a big target, 6'5", 210 pounds. Kind of got that Joe Juravicious yeah. look to him. And his catch gets him near the midfield strike. And he'll come in motion on first down, just inside the 50, Silas Red. Red had a little opening. It closed in a hurry, though. Courtesy of Nico Johnson, another one of those great linebackers for Alabama. Alabama's got backup linebackers that could yeah. start most places. Well, and they, they play so situational. Nico Johnson is in there in run situations. C.J. Mosley comes in in his place in pass situations. I mean, they've got guys that can play multiple roles on this very complex defense that Nick Saban and Kirby Smart run. And with Mosley in there, they're thinking pass. On second down at seven. And they'll get one. Off play action is Bolin, and he fires high and almost intercepted, or was it? I think it hit the ground. Robert Lester, who had eight pickoffs a year ago, saying he's got it, and the officials agree. Well, the official that made the call did not have a great angle to see whether the ball hit the ground. We get another look. Here's number 37 on the overthrow intended for Moy. Hard to tell right there. They'll definitely look at it during this timeout. After review, replay shows that the ball hit the ground. Therefore, no interception, as we told you. Here's a look the back judge had, Todd. Yeah, Steve Patrick is the back judge, and, and his angle looked like a clean interception because Lester did a good job getting his arms under it. But from this angle, you can see the ball clearly bounced off of the turf, 
into his chest. So again, that's why we have the replay. And it worked again. Yep, sure did. Robert Lester, who was an intercepting machine a year ago, thought he had another one there. Sometimes I think those guys actually think they have the interception because it happens so fast. Yeah. You don't let the ball hit the ground at your elbow. Well, for the seventh time now, Penn State third and seven or more. They're two of six in that situation so far tonight. Four receivers here for Bolden. Alabama thinking about bringing pressure off the corner, and they do. Look out. Bolden got rid of it. C.J. Mosley comes up with a football. This one might be an interception. Apparently it is. It was Robert Lester, beg your pardon, the guy that just about had the other one. This time he's got it, I guess. Well, because of the pressure, Bolden was not able to step into this throw, and he threw it behind his intended receiver. And Lester, who had eight interceptions a year ago, and thought he had one a minute ago. That's a better catch than the other comes one. Comes up with this one. <laughs> but see, there's the pressure that forced the underthrow. The play of interception is under further review. Well, I don't know. <laughs> we might have the same thing happen. Jeez. They'll take a look at it. We'll take about 10 more looks at it while you take a timeout with us with 12.09 remaining in the third. Robert Lester's a really good safety, and he led the SEC in interceptions and number two in the country last year, but I think we're going to have to take another one away from him, Ledge. <laughs> After review, the ruling on the field is the ball did hit the ground. Therefore, it's an incomplete pass. Ball wow. replaced with the plus 47. It'll be fourth down. Penn State's living right. Robert Lester's not, but you're going to see as Bolden is peppered as he got rid of the ball. Watch the bounce right there. Well, and see, that's the situation that Penn State found themselves in last year down in Tuscaloosa as you take another look at this There's play. The ball. Um, Here's the ball coming out right there on the ground. And then into the waiting hands for the second time of number 37. Third and seven plus. Yep. A creative pressure by the Alabama defense, they hit the quarterback, the ball's underthrown, and in this case, it was not an interception. One thing we know for sure, Robert Lester has a nose for the ball. He really does. You know? And he's got really good hands, yeah. and his acting skills are exceptional. <laughs> <laughs> Fair to punt. Marquise Mays camps under it and lets it go. Can Penn State get to it? Nope, not before it got to the end zone. So Alabama and A.J. McCarron will take over at the 20-yard line. Now the new season of Dancing with the Stars premieres Monday, September 19th, 8 o'clock, 7 central on ABC, with our most surprising cast ever, including soccer goalie Hope Solo and L.A. Laker Ron Artest. I don't know if he'll be met a world peace by then or not, but I know that I've lost my wife now until sometime in the spring on Monday nights. <laughs> Big fan is Nancy. Oh, boy. Yeah. We'll see you ever. First and 10, Alabama. 12 minutes to go in the third. They lead by two touchdowns. McCarron, quick slant to Marquise, uh, Marquise Mays, and he got about three is all. They bottled him up pretty good. He had a long reception yeah. early in the ball game. Well, you know, I think they've done a pretty good job on Mays and a pretty good job on Richardson. I just don't think Tom Bradley and the defensive staff expected McCarron to play with as much poise right. as he's played with so far. The Andrew White, who doesn't have a catch, is a motion man. Now he brings Michael Williams out there with him to the top of your screen. And Smelly comes down as a tight end on the left. They've got them all spread out. They go to Richardson, and he's dropped for no gain. Jordan Hill made the play. Holly? Guys, after last week's game, Coach Nick Saban of Alabama was critical that they didn't have more explosive plays. You know, they're missing that home run threat in Julio Jones, but they were hoping that they could get Darius Hanks back. He will be reinstated next week. He had to miss two games because he played four games his freshman year and didn't take medical redshirt. So he'll be back 32 catches a year ago, and they're hopeful that Duran They just don't have them quite yet. Yeah, they got a third and seven. Three-man rush against McCarron. He's in trouble, and he's just got to throw away. Yeah, Penn State won on that play. They confused him. They only rushed three, which means they dropped eight, and A.J. McCarron had nowhere to go with the football. Good call by Tom Bradley on that third down play. Second straight three and out by Scrappy's defensive group for Penn State. It'll bring out Mandel to punt again. 
And again, Penn State looks to get excellent field position. Again, a mile in the air, but short. And the field position is tied, settled to good by Justin Brown at the 46-yard line. He hit it about 50 yards in the air, but only 31 yards downfield. Penn State on offense, down two touchdowns when we come back. ESPN's College Football on ABC. Brought to you by Pacific Life. For insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life. The power to help you succeed. And Chevrolet. It's the Chevy season of doing. Get to your Chevy dealer today and get the truck that does it all. Matt McGloin's back in a quarterback for Penn State. Either by design or by the fact that Rob Bolden got whacked that last time he threw a pass by C.J. Mosley. At any rate, at the 46-yard line, this is about as good a field position as you're going to get if you're a Nittany Lion. And here is McGloin off play action, firing and almost intercepted again. This one would have been Daquan Menzies. Not sure who he was throwing that one to. He had Beecham out in the flat, his back. He had the wide receiver running down the sideline. He kind of threw it right in between two of them. So I'm not sure who he was going for here. Looks like maybe Joe Suey. He was the closest guy to it. And almost yeah. to Menzi. McGloin is 0 for 4. Now he's almost intercepted 0 for 5. And See, now the natives are getting restless a little bit. The, the longest play that Penn State has had from scrimmage today has been 15 yards, which suggests that Alabama does not think that these receivers can run by him and make a big play stretch in the field. So they are really clamped down on all the short routes. Now that slant route is good if the corner is off and you've got some space. It's not good when they're right up in the guy's grill and that's that's how they're covering the receivers here in the ball game today. And Joe can barely stand to look at a third and ten. McGloin in the shotgun. Going to throw long. And Moy almost had it incomplete. Will Lowry was back there. Not a badly thrown ball, but no. two defenders back there. Well, it was a well-thrown ball, and Moy beat the corner, but the safety, Lowry, is the guy who made the play. He came over to help the corner, Milner, who was beat, and knocked the ball loose. And that's what you want your free safety to do as a helper. And the Nittany Lions wasted tremendous yeah. field position. Of course, if they pin Alabama down inside the 10 on this punt from Farah, that would be okay, I guess. But Marquise Mays waits on the other end near the 15 yard line. And he's going to back Mays up, that's for sure. He's going to take it at the five. Tough call, but maybe he'll make it pay. Marquise Mays on the return down the sideline. And he's all the way out near midfield. Well, he got an incredible block from a true freshman, Vinny Sensiri whose dad, Sal, is an assistant coach for Alabama and was a great middle linebacker for Pittsburgh back in the 80s. I mean, he left his feet and flew into his block. Watch number three on the right. Watch this guy right here. Size him up. Ooh. Leaves his feet, and that was the key block on the edge for Marquise Mays. A 49-yard punt, but a 45-yard return. I was like you. When he fielded it on the five, you're like, that's a mistake. Yep. You know? But uh, he got a couple big-time blocks. And so now it's Alabama with great field position to start this drive with just under 10 minutes remaining in the third quarter and a two-touchdown lead. Trent Richardson off the right side, carrying Devin still with him for about six or seven yards. Alabama coaches telling us last night, watch number three on special teams. Now, he had a couple of vicious hits on kick coverage last week in the opening win over Kent State. And his block just set up Mays on a great punt return. Well, you see that hometown Tuscaloosa. He finished up high school there. He was in Charlotte, North Carolina, because his dad was coaching with the Panthers before he went to Alabama. Second down at three. Brandon Gibson in motion. 
And they'll just work Trent Richardson now. And he's got a first down, and he's taking would-be tacklers with him again. Nick Suke finally brings him down, but he got six more, and we check in with Robert again. All right, Brad, Trent Richardson has all the makings of an All-American. Here's an AT&T All-America Player of the Week update. Darren Thomas, 12 completions in the first half, five went for touchdowns as Oregon is putting it all over Nevada, 48-7 to right now. You can text VOTE to take part, 55862, for a chance to a trip to the national championship. That's a nice touchdown to completion percentage. Five scoring passes and a half. Here, A.J. McCarron's got Alabama back. And Penn State's into the field. And he goes deep on the sideline and complete. Marquise Mays was the guy out there. Chaz Powell was covering. Yeah. And for the first time in the whole game, McCarron got knocked down. I mean, Glenn Carson came on a blitz, hit him and knocked him down, forced the ball to be thrown out of bounds. Watch Carson, number 40, right up the middle. And this is the first time in the ball game that McCarron ended up on the ground. And one of the few incompletions that he's had as well. Right, exactly. So second down at 10. Ball at the Penn State 37. McCarron steps back in the gun, directs traffic. He's got Trent Richardson right on his right hip. Wants to throw, flushed out of the pocket. Now he's going to run with it. And gets what he can and gets down. Drew Astorino took a kind of a wicked hit from friendly fire at the end of that play, but he hops up. I guess he's okay. Got a leg whip by his own guy. I think you're seeing a little bit more aggressive style right now by Tom Bradley in the Penn State defense, trying to create some pressure on A.J. McCarron. They weren't able to get him to the ground that time, but they were able to flush him from the pocket. Big third down at seven. Richardson comes out as the extra receiver in an empty backfield for McCarron. Four-man rush, he throws over the middle, and it's Norwood, does he have the first down? I think so. If he doesn't, it's fourth down and about three inches. There's Tom Bradley, the defensive coordinator. Well, they run off with the two inside guys, and then Norwood on the short crossing route, and he's working on a linebacker. So that's a good read by the quarterback, McCarron, as he sees a wide receiver trying to get separation from a linebacker. That's a good place to go with the ball. Not working, not only working on a linebacker, but throwing it right over the umpire's yeah. ear. That's an extra guy. <laughs> yeah, they stretch out the chains, and he's got it by half the length of the football. Third catch for Norwood, all on third down. You know, Nick Saban and Jim McElwain both told us that uh, they, they were disappointed with their young wide receivers last week. Thought they played with too much anxiety and they didn't play fast. I think they're playing better today. Obviously, Marquise Mays is a proven guy. Some of the other guys stepping up and playing better today. Norwood, one of those guys. Yeah. Holly mentioned the two guys that eventually will be joining that wide receiving group. McCarron, and they blow this play dead. Brad Smelly might have come out of his stance to tight end. Prior to the snap, false start, 17 offense, five-yard penalty, first down. That is a first penalty against Alabama today. Monday Night Football returns in a couple of days. Two games between division rivals. First at 7, Tom Brady and the Patriots take on the Dolphins. And at 10-15, Darren McFadden leads the Raiders against Kyle Orton and the Broncos. Monday Night Football just two nights away on ESPN. We just signed a new deal. ESPN with the NFL for Monday Night Football through the 2021 season. Trent Dilfer and I will be out in Denver for the second game coming up on Monday nights. After Mike and Jaws, and John and Susie had the first game for you. Stanley makes the stop after a short game. He's going to bring up second down and about 13. We're talking about these wide receivers for Alabama. You got to keep in mind, too, Julio Jones, who was a first round pick of the Atlanta Falcons, had 78 catches last year. Right. The next guy on that list was Marquise Mays with 38. So that's 40 more catches than the second place guy last yeah. year. So a lot of new faces, not only a new quarterback, but new wideouts, too. In the shotgun, second down at 14. 
A Karen with a pocket to work and a deep ball to Williams. Nice throw and catch inside the 10. 24 yard pass play. Williams caught a touchdown pass earlier in the game. Well, they had a tight end working against the linebacker, Gerald Hodges, number six. And Hodges was in okay position, but he jumped too early. He jumped too soon, and by doing that, he lost contact with the receiver, and Williams went up and high-pointed the ball, caught it at the top of his jump, and a nice completion for McCarron. And a first and goal for the Tide with a two-touchdown lead. They can start to put this thing a little bit away. Uh, we're going to have a whole fourth quarter and five minutes or so to play, but they're in great shape. Just outside the Penn State seventh. Here's a stretch play to Trent Richardson to the corner. Did he get there? Linesman's right there, and he says no at about the one-yard line. But he got six more. Trent Richardson slowly putting together a pretty impressive day again. Look how he secures the football. You know, Mark Ingram rarely ever fumbled when he was the primary ball carrier. Yep. Trent Richardson, you see him carry that ball high and tight. Second down, a goal at the one. Trent Richardson's got four touchdowns here early in the season, and he might have five, but it's close. Just short of the goal line. He says he's in. They say no. Well, Gerald Hodges, who was beaten on the pass play, did a nice job of getting in there, getting underneath the legs of Richardson, and stopping him short of the goal line. McCarron throws, and incomplete. Chris Underwood, the tight end, got his left hand on it. Boy, that's a big difference. Now fourth down and about two feet. Fourth and goal. Well, they tried to go with this quick count. They, they lined up and tried to run the play quickly, hoping they'd catch the Penn State defense out of position. And Underwood was open, just not able to come down with the catch. That's a big difference, my friend. A yep. touchdown and now holding. I'm not so sure I wouldn't have thrown that one to number three. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it looked like he was open in the flat. 18-yard field goal attempt by Jeremy Shelley. And it is right through the middle. So Penn State wins that battle a little bit as they hold the tie to just three more with 450 remaining here in the third quarter. 20 to 3, Alabama out front. Well, we've got a moment here before the kick. Let's take a look at our taste of the town this week with Todd. Brought to you by Expedia. What do you got, Parker? When I was a student at Penn State and family and friends used to come and visit, it was customary on the morning they were leaving to head downtown and have breakfast at the Waffle Shop. Now this place has been a landmark for over 30 years. The last 10 years it's been owned by Pittsburgh native Greg Kite, who now is living the dream, grooming his two sons in the business, Greg and Zach. Uh, you're a breakfast guy. Yeah, I am. Well, <laughs> wait a minute. Of course, I guess you're all meal. You're, yeah. you're a lunch, <laughs> dinner. I knew you were going there. <laughs> Four. Breakfast is my favorite. Let's yeah. put it that way. Well, a 50-yard drive, and Nick Saban's got his offense over there talking to them. Trent Richardson thought he had a one-yard touchdown run, which would have been his second on the ground today, but they settled for the field goal of Shelley of 18 yards. 11 plays, 50 yards, a little over five minutes. And now a 20-3 lead, and this one's starting to take on the look of last year when they won 24-3 in Tuscaloosa. Penn State wasted an opportunity with field position the last time they had the ball. Foster to kick. Adrian Amos and Davon Smith are back deep. This will be Amos at the five. And he can't find anywhere to hide, and he didn't even get it out to the 20-yard line. Well. We're going to find out what Mr. Blackledge had for breakfast. Now, I'm an omelet guy, and one of the best ones here is the Greek omelet, made with three eggs, fresh spinach, chopped tomatoes, and lots of feta cheese. Add a side of thick sliced bacon and a tradition here, fresh cut home fries. I like mine well done, just like old times. No. Now, that, that's a serious plate, yeah. especially with the home fries. The home fries are tremendous. Did you eat all that? Every bit of it. And fresh squeezed <laughs> orange juice, and uh, it was outstanding. Oh, boy. Right on the ground, and Bolden back in at quarterback. 
So the quarterback carousel continues for Penn State. Yeah. Bolden was so good in the first drive, and then the, everything's just been real iffy between either one of them, he or McGloin, since then. Well, again, th this is quite possibly the best defense in college football. Yeah. You know, they thought the defense they had in 2009 when they won the national championship may have been the best that they'd had at Alabama. They think this one could be better. Ten starters returned from last year. Here's Bolden off play action. Wants a deep ball on the sideline. Oh, one-handed catch by Moy. And there he went and used that 6-5 frame in front of Daquan Minzy. And a pickup of 27. Longest play of the day for yeah. Penn State. See, sometimes you're not going to be wide open. And you got to go up and make a play. And that's what Derek Moy did. And that's what I think Joe Paterno at halftime was kind of frustrated about. He said, we got some talented guys. They're not playing aggressive enough. And that was an aggressive play by a talented guy, Derek Moy. That baby might make top 10 plays of the day as far as catches anyway. And a first down at the 47 now. Penn State, pump fake by Bolden. He's going to go deep again on the sideline. And this one, he underthrew that. I, I don't know why he threw that one so short. The pump fake isolated his guy one on one. And then he just kind of short armed this for Moy again. See, the pump fake is going to freeze the safety. And that's going to leave single coverage on the backside. But then he underthrows this ball. If he throws it out in front of Moy, he catches it again. Not only didn't get the completion, he got his wide receiver whacked at the end yeah. of the play. See, sometimes you purposely underthrow that fade if the coverage is too good. That time he had his man beat, that's got to be thrown down the field. Second down and 10 at the 47. Now draw play. Silas Red hasn't been able to get anything going since early in the ball game. Let's check in with Robert Flores. Robert. Hey, Brad, South Carolina is trying to beat Georgia in consecutive seasons for the first time since 2000-2001. This might help. Fake punt. Melvin Ingram, 68 yards. And the Gamecocks take the lead 14-13 right before halftime. Look at Virginia Tech, ranked number 11, tied with East Carolina late in the third. Brad. Looks like Georgia at least playing a little better than we saw them play at the Georgia Dome last week against Boise State. Third down, 10 here for Penn State. Bolden loads it, fires, and it's complete. Justin Brown has got a first down. Good protection by the Penn State offensive line. Alabama chose to only rush four. And Justin Brown, who is a big receiver in his own right, at six foot three, 215 pounds, makes a nice catch by the sideline. Bolden had to tuck that one in there in front of Menzi, who had decent coverage, kind of flailed with his left hand a little bit too late. And now Penn State's got something working offensively at the Alabama 41-yard line. Brandon Beecham has checked back in at tailback. He's seen limited duty so far today. They fake it to him. And Bolden loads and goes long. And this one's intercepted by Mark Barron. Again under thrown, and this time the All-American safety and two-time captain was waiting on it. Well, they tried to fool Alabama with a double move. They pump fake. Derek Moy did a stop and go. And not only did he not fool the corner, Menzi, he didn't fool the safety either. Watch the pump fake and the stop and go at the top. It doesn't fool anybody, and that's a play that Rob Bolden can't throw. He's got to drop that down to the underneath route. Brandon Beecham was open as an outlet receiver, and he's got to throw it there instead of taking a chance against two excellent defenders. Mark Barron, one of the best in the country, has his 11th career interception. Gives it back to his offense at the nine-yard line. A little over two minutes to go, third quarter. Alabama in command, 20-3. It's going to be Eddie Lacy this time. He's bouncing off Lions for about eight yards. So Richardson, who's got over 75 yards on the ground, giving way to Lacy in this particular set. Brent Richardson with a touchdown today and almost a second one. And he's cheering on his partner, Eddie Lacy, the sophomore. Louisiana native, six footer, 200. 20 pounds. He got almost nine on that last carry. In fact, we'll call it second down and one. Marquise Mays in motion. 
Lacey again. Big opening for Lacey into the secondary before they can bring him down out at the 28-yard line. Now, Brad, I want to go back and look at this interception by Bolden just to, to make a point. Watch this guy beat him. Now, after the fake, all right, you're going to take a shot at a home run. You need a big play, but it's not there. So now you got to unload and you got to look for this guy that uncovers an outlet receiver and give him the football and just take a four or five yard game. You know, I mean, everybody wants to make the big play, but it's not always there against a defense like this. A first down after the big run by Lacey. McCarron comes up ready to throw on first down. Had it tipped at the line. Jack Crawford. It's his second time today. Big number 81 has gotten a paw on one of the passes of A.J. McCarron. Hey, well, that's pretty good to, to get up and get those because this is a tall quarterback. Yeah. You know, A.J., his nickname is Big Bird. You know, he's 6'4", <laughs> 205 pounds. I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a tall guy, and they've knocked a couple of his passes down. Just over a minute remaining in the third quarter. Second down and 10 from the 29 for Alabama. Lacey hit at the line of scrimmage. Eked out a yard to the 30, and that's it. That'll bring up third down and long here in the final minute of the third quarter. Lost a tire. Puts it back on and third down and nine. Well, if Penn State's going to make a play here by their defense and try to give their offense yet another chance, this would be a good spot. Alabama and company are thinking the same thing. They flush Lacey out of that backfield, so it's all McCarron on third and nine. Just a three-man rush. They throw the slip screen to Marquise Mays, and Penn State's waiting on it. And they will force a kick. But that'll have to wait till the fourth quarter. Three quarters come to a close at Beaver Stadium. Alabama 30, Penn State 3. This presentation of ESPN and ABC's College Football, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings, will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Start the fourth quarter as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Alabama with a 20 to 3 lead. A.J. McCarron has been very efficient today on the road in a hostile environment. 153 yards and a touchdown. Trent Richardson, 75 yards and a score. Rob Bolden, 8 21. That's not good enough, but Penn State did force a punt here to start the fourth quarter. With Todd Blackledge and Holly Rowe, I'm Brad Nessler. Nice to have you along with us on a beautiful day in Happy Valley. Wouldn't be so happy if they don't find a comeback in the next 15 minutes. Justin Brown is going to take this one at the 28-yard line. Dancing his way for a nifty little return out to the 36. As we're just about set to give Penn State the football back for Joe Paterno and company. Joe in his 62nd year on the staff here, his 46th as head coach. When he took over, Lyndon Johnson was a present gas cost. 32 cents a gallon average home price 3840 that's like my mortgage first Star Trek episode aired and the sound of music one of my least favorite movies of all time won the Oscar for best picture least favorite just can't stand that show I'm sorry I don't like the Wizard of Oz either so just bury me on the ground almost a face mask there and we might have a call or a horse collar as flags fly into the 41 yard line. I just hurt your feelings with that Wizard of Oz yeah, shot, didn't I? Yeah, did. I love the Wizard of Oz. Personal foul, face mask, number 30 of the defense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, automatic first down. Well, you take a look as Red with Dante Hightower going high and got his hand in the mask right Penn, there. Penn State. They'll take it because they yeah. haven't had many plays over 15 yards right. today. Now I'm worried that we're either going to have an ABC Sunday Night movie of Wizard of Oz or Sound yeah. of Music. The boss is here today, too. <laughs> Here's a give up the middle. Pick up of about three for Silas Ray. Let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, I can actually do you one better on that Joe Paterno streak. He's been there pretty long. But how about this gentleman, Dick Coffey, at his 756th consecutive 
Alabama game. He hasn't missed a game since 1946. You know, they have a saying at Alabama, we don't just play football, we live it. Well, he's been <laughs> living it for over half a century. That is incredible. Good job, Dick Cuff. Watching his tide lead by 17, but Penn State back in Alabama's end of the field, courtesy of that penalty. McGloin's going to flare it out to Red, but a great play out in the flat. C.J. Mosley hit him low and knocked him down. Time is of the essence right now. 13 and a half to go. Penn State trailing. They need some scores in kind of a hurry here. Holding on the sideline. McGloin at the controls. There's the third down story on the day. Alabama looks like they're loading up to come after McGloin. They do have a delayed blitz. He went across the middle, though, and he got it. And now the ball is out. Are they going to say incomplete? No. Justin Brown had his hands on it. Well, it was a little bit behind, I think. And as Justin Brown was trying to pull the ball from his back hip into a secure position and run at the same time, he dropped it. Yeah. You go for it here, Todd, don't you? Yeah, I think he has. I mean, time, as I said, is kind of running out on you. Fourth and six. But at least you're in their end of the field. Well, maybe not. Let's see what they're going to bring in. Yeah, the only the only thing about this is that your defense has held them a little bit. Yeah, they are going to punt. I think they thought about it, though. Yeah. So Farrell will punt. And Marquise Mays stands back at the 10-yard line. And a penalty marker down back where Marquise Mays was standing. That's a delay a game. Delay of game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. Let's give Fair a, a little more room to work if he you know, tuck one inside the 10. Neither punter has been really been able to do that today. I think a little bit of ex inexperience at the kicking positions and the punting positions. Hangs this punt up. Bounces at the five, but again, coverage team can't get down there. Take a wicked bounce. 45 yard punt. It's a touchback, though. And it'll be 20 yard line for Alabama. Joe Pond looking on. Only 13 minutes to go. The tide and their fans like what they see. Tonight, the Wolverines play under the lights for the first time ever at the Big House as they take on the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame College Football presented by Hampton Hotels on ESPN and ESPN 3 tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. And that should be interesting. Our colleague, Desmond Howard, it's his night. It's 20th anniversary of his great catch that set up his Heisman Trophy. Des had his family there, his kids uh, right. on the set of game day today. College Football Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. Here's Trent Richardson. And Richardson's going to fight his way for almost eight yards, and they still have not taken him down. The crimson and white of Alabama and the navy and white of Penn yeah. State. If you want one of those fancy uniforms that look like Power Rangers, ain't yeah. happening here. I love these uniforms. You know, a lot of people like changing uniforms, and Penn State changed their uniforms this year. Uh, how much? They, they, well, they used to have the white trim, uh -huh. and then they, they went back to just the straight blue. <laughs> So they changed, you know. <laughs> was that for the better? Yeah, I think so. I think it's classy looking. Uh, the, I love it. The white border got too big. Was yeah, that what they it was said? A little too fancy. Yeah. <laughs> Here's McCarron throwing out the flat to Smelly, and Smelly brought down at the 40-yard line with a first down. Pick up a 10. Joe Paterno. He's been here for all those navy and whites. <laughs> the white socks and the black shoes, yeah. as only Joe can wear. We haven't had a chance to see his white socks and his rolled up pant legs. See, he always used to tell us, ah, you know, if everybody had plain uniforms, we'd have stars and stripes and all kind of stuff. <laughs> I don't know if he really meant that or oh, not. Oh, boy. All I know is you turn a TV on and see these two uniforms. You know who you're playing. That's exactly yeah. right. We don't have to have the thing on the bottom that says Alabama Penn State. Here's an end around for Marquise Mays, and nice job by Michael Mowdy first to smell that one out and bring him down. See, Alabama is getting a little bit conservative here because they know, I mean, they've got a 17-point lead, very similar to last year. When they get ahead of you, they're going to try to run the football and eat clock and trust that their defense is not going to give up three scores. 
with the way their defense is played they may not give up even another field goal before this one's over. So we're down here 11 minutes Alabama 20 to 3. Brent Richardson gets the call. And again another tough run as Brent Richardson approaching the century mark. Picked up five more there. Many people expecting Alabama to make a run at the SEC championship this year and a national championship. I think Nick Saban was happy that they had this game. You know, he, ever since he's been there, they've played one non-conference game early against yeah. a quality opponent. Played Virginia Tech, they've played Clemson, and uh, they play Michigan next year, Virginia Tech two years from now. He likes this kind of an atmosphere to get ready for that SEC schedule. Most of those crimson shirts you just saw are in the upper deck of the left end zone, but Alabama travels well. Here's another batted pass. Eric Lattimore got his hand on a second one today, much like Jack Crawford did on the other side. You know, you mentioned the, the traveling of the Alabama fans. Here's what I don't get. Supposedly, they only got 5,000 tickets for this game. Uh -huh. But if you look around here, I think there's more than 5,000 red shirts. Did they? I agree. Some creative uh, finance ways of finding <laughs> tickets. <laughs> Sprinkled in among all the white shirts, but they are a great fan base and these two programs fans and everything have such great respect for one another. It goes back to Bear and Joe. Yep. Mandel the punt. And it's going to bounce in front of the return man. This time they can advance it because there's no fair catch and Justin Brown will take it out across the 35 to the 36. A little over 10 minutes remaining. The Houndstooth Caps in the sunshine in Happy Valley right now with a 20 to 3 lead. ESPN's College Football on ABC brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings, Beer, Sports, and Hyundai. If it's fuel efficient, affordable, stylish, and safe, it's probably a Hyundai. Alabama 20 to 3 on the road in front of the largest crowd to ever see Alabama play a football game. 107,846 here today. You were talking about the respect that these two teams have and their fans. And Joe Paterno was saying last night, let's be as classy here at home as the fans in Tuscaloosa were to us at Bryant-Denny Stadium a year ago in a 24-3 Alabama win. Here's Matt McGloin going. Kind of batted down again, and Jesse Williams that time. A lot's been said about the Penn State fans over the years that they get a little bit too into it, and that Alabama was so good to Joe Paterno and company a year ago. I was coming in here on the plane yesterday, and I saw a young lady that went to Penn State, has lived here her whole life. We had two Alabama fans sitting in front of us, and she wrote down all the restaurants and places of interest that they should go, <laughs> handed it to them, and said, I live very close to where you're staying. My husband and I would be happy to show you around if you need help and I oh. thought now there's a Penn State fan that did the best she could for the Alabama folks that are visiting from Tuscaloosa. McGloin down the sideline incomplete a little too far in front of Moy. Now wait a minute penalty at the very end of the play. They got tangled up a little bit back there Mark Barron and company and the flag came out late on that sideline route. Pass interference on the defense, number 21. It's a 15 yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic first down. It's a big play, too, on a penalty. And yeah. Alabama hasn't had many penalties today, that's for sure. That's only the third, but it gives Penn State a first down. Well, Dre Kirkpatrick, again, he's a big corner at six foot three, and he got a last push in there as the ball was in the air. It wasn't a lot, but the fact that the ball was in the air when he made contact is what drew the flag. Yeah, the side judge was backpedaling. He was trying to get that flag out of his pocket. That's why it appeared to come in a little bit late. So first down for the Nittany Lions again in Alabama territory at the 49-yard line. The time is running out on him, 10 minutes to play. McGloin pumps one way in the pocket, scrambles around. Now he's just got to get rid of it. And while he does that, we go to Robert Flores. Robert. Brad, yellow flags there, checkered flags in Richmond. Tonight, 7 Eastern, right here on ABC. Jeff Gordon coming off a win Tuesday in Atlanta, leading the field as the Sprint Cup Series is in Richmond. Chase playoffs right around the corner in NASCAR. Brad. 
Jeff Gordon won Tuesday at Atlanta Motor Speedway. He had a race off with Jimmy Johnson. Those guys were sliding around about the last five laps. I watched the end of that race. I don't even know how they kept their cars on the track, but they had a beautiful finish after a rainy weekend in Atlanta. We'll hope they had good weather in Richmond tonight when we're done. And we'll be done in just under 10 minutes on the clock, that is. Here's a sprint draw to beat you. And he goes for eight or nine. You know, we just put that graphic up the last two years. Alabama's outscored Penn State 41 to six. But we can go back even further. Counting today's game, the last six times that Penn State has played Alabama, they've scored 47 points, Penn State has. And that equates to about 7.8 points per game. So scoring against Alabama's defense for Penn State has been difficult the last several times they've played. If there's any hope, Todd, it's right here. Yep. You got to convert. You got to get a touchdown at the end of this drive. Down 17. And straight ahead, Beecham's got it. They faked the end around after they went straight ahead. And he has the first down at about the 38 yard line. So the fans are trying to stay in it. Still cheering on their Nittany Lions. They come off a 2010 campaign last year of 7 and 6 and just 500 in the Big Ten. Well, you've got under nine minutes to play now, and you've got to score three times. Yep. So there has to be a little more sense of urgency out of the Penn State sideline, huddle, everything, because you need three scores against a team that we've already said uh, doesn't give up points too easily. The Lions' deepest penetration has been the Alabama 26, so if they get a first down here, they'll be right around the closest they've been to the goal line. Here is an end around. Davon Smith, he's got McGloin out as a blocker, and he lost the ball, and Barron, does he have it? Alabama look to get their hands on it first, and they have it. The guy that ran over Joe Paterno and forced him to coach from the booth just coughed up the football and gave it back to the opposition. Well, it's Drake Kirkpatrick again. For the second time, he gets his helmet on the football and creates the fumble, and Barron comes up with the loose football. But Drake Kirkpatrick, two times today, puts the headgear right on the football and knocks it loose. And Joe disappointed, obviously, in how things are going right now. Well, they had three turnovers in Tuscaloosa last year and lost 24-3. to Now they have another one inside the 35 that probably took away any hope they had of a comeback. Eight and a half to go in the fourth quarter, 20 to three. Alabama in command. Kirkpatrick, another big play defensively, has given Alabama the ball back at its own 35 yard line. And the Eddie Lacy shedding the first tackle and the second and almost the third and almost a 10 yard gain. Todd, we talked about it coming in. Three turnovers last year in Tuscaloosa by Penn State. Three this season. Two in Alabama territory, and the third one was right on the 50-yard yeah. line. Yeah, and then any momentum that they had, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's tough sledding against this defense, period. Getting in the end zone, moving the ball, only 170 yards of offense, but they did at least have the ball in Alabama territory a couple times, and not much to show for it. This is just going to be a dose of Lacey and Lacey and more Lacey, I would expect. Second down of the yard. Run blitz, Lacey straight up the middle, he's got the first down, and he's got about three after that. Well, you know, the, the situation here, I think it's interesting. Coming into the game, so much talk about four quarterbacks, both teams playing two quarterbacks, neither team really committing to one or the other. I think Alabama's quarterback situation, even though as Holly reported, it's still going to be very competitive between A.J. McCarron and Phillip Sims, but I think that situation has gotten a little clearer, yeah. that A.J. McCarron is, is capable of leading this team right now. On the other side, I think Penn State's quarterback situation has gotten even muddier. I don't know that it's gotten any better or any clearer by today's performance. You know, Bolden had a scoring drive, though it was a field goal the first time he had it. The second time he did an okay job, and then they went to McGloin in the third series and the fourth series. And I don't think number one ever got his rhythm back after no. that. Penn State, when they play top-ranked teams, we mentioned you got to go back to '99, the last time they beat somebody in the in the top ten, but top ten teams since 2000. Lost the last eight against top five teams and three and 11. And they're going to be dropping to one and one on the season. They had 
high hopes coming into this one. And the first seven and a half minutes of the first quarter, they had reason to think that way, and so did their fans. And Lacey now with a big opening up the middle again, broke a tackle. Lacey inside the 20, rumbles his way down inside the 15. He's a load, and the Penn State defense being a little bit tired too, and he goes for 29 yards. Well, one of the things everybody talks about with Eddie Lacey is his spin move. I mean, it's something that he really relies on. Watch after the contact, the spin right there, but he keeps moving forward. He's strong, but he's amazingly quick with his feet for a guy that big at six foot, 220 pounds. Call him the circle button because of that spin move. <laughs> he might have gotten spun around because somebody hit him in the helmet, but either way, great run at 78 yards on nine carries. And now Alabama inside the Penn State, 15 at the 13 yard line, first down. Keeping it on the ground. Trent Richardson, and he's in. Touchdown, Alabama. Great to have two backs that good, interchangeable. And Trent Richardson, his second touchdown on the ground today, his fifth of the year. Well, Alabama did what you expect them to do, but I have to say that was the first drive today where it looked like the Penn State defense had their will broke. You know, I, they just didn't look like they did. After that last possession ended in a turnover, the Penn State defense was not ready to, uh, to play that drive. Extra point is up and good. And the lead goes to 27 to 3. So it's even more impressive score than it was a year ago in Tuscaloosa. First it was a big portion of Eddie Lacy, including this 29 yard run. That got him down to the 13 yard line and then give Lacy a breather, give it to the All American candidate Trent Richardson. 13 yards and a touchdown. Trent Richardson over 100 yards now with his second touchdown. It's 27 to 3, 614 remaining in the ball game. Nick Saban told us yesterday, turnover margin and explosive plays the difference in most games. Yeah, though. it really is, and that comes from his NFL background. Those are the two statistical categories that that mean the most and explain most games. And as you look at today's game, clearly Alabama has the upper hand. The turnovers, the explosive plays, and uh, they, they've been solid. You know, yeah. solid play from the quarterback. Their defense settled down after the first possession and made it very difficult for Penn State. They haven't beaten themselves. They were solid in the special teams. Everything you want to do when you go on the road in a big game to have a chance to win, Alabama's done. They straightened out all the things that were problems a week ago. They put it on the ground, fumbling. Yeah. Though they only lost one, they did have four interceptions. And today, you saw that turnover difference as they kept it clean. At the 12-yard line is Adrian Amos. And out near the 30. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Normally a play here and there can turn a game around. Brad Smelly's fake punt, even though Coach Saban said we didn't run it right. They got it by inches, and that led to Michael Williams' touchdown from A.J. McCarron. And Trent Richardson starting to warm up after Lacey ripped off some big runs. He just went 13 yards to go over 100 for the day with Two touchdowns on the ground, five for the season. And McGloin still a rather bold and now back in at quarterback. And he goes down the middle and got it complete to Allen Robinson, the freshman. That's his first catch. So you have to wonder now as Penn State gets ready for their next ball game if it's going to be Rob Bolden. Is it going to be Matt McGloin? Is it going to be both of them again? Those questions will be asked a million times here in Happy Valley by the fans. They were a little restless, mostly with Matt McGloin today, I think, just judging by the sound around the stadium. Bolden, and that one hits somebody en route to his intended receiver as we check in with Robert Flores. Robert. Brad, since 2007, Virginia Tech is 4-5 and five in the first couple of weeks of the season, tied with East Carolina until Josh Oglesby trucks his way into the end zone. Hokies on top late 17-10 against East Carolina. Brett. East Carolina always seems to give Virginia Tech a good ball yep. game when they get together. Here 27-3 in the final 5-44. You know, you talk about the two quarterbacks at Penn State and where they go from here. Uh, I was involved in a two-quarterback situation here my sophomore year. Myself and Jeff Hosteller, we were in the same recruiting class. Jeff had a couple older brothers that played at Penn State, and uh, 
very similar to the start of this season. Coach Paterno didn't make up his mind until the Friday before the first game. He talked to both of us individually, said he was going to start Jeff Hosteller, but we would both play. And it kind of went that way for three games. And then in the fourth game, uh, he named me the starter for a game at Missouri. And, and I started every game since then. Or, Jeff or from that. And Jeff went to West Virginia and had a great career. And, I, I think that it's obviously it's better off to have one guy that you go with. I just don't know that either one of these guys has made it clear. Yeah. Come on, Rob. Here's Bolden, who's the better of the two runners, doing what he does better than McGloin, and he got a first down. The other thing, a lot of people wonder if there's any tension between McGloin and Bolden, and the coaches will tell you there's not, but when you're in a situation like that, you always try to one-up the other guy in practice. And during the offseason, McGloin was back in his hometown in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Somebody asked him, there was a rumor that Rob Bolden might consider transferring. And he said, well, that would be a big loss because he's a great backup to me. Yeah. Well, that's the kind of guy McGloin is. And, and right. that's not the kind of thing that makes for great teammates. But right. when you're competing, you're competing. Well, and make no mistake about it. I mean, you can say that they get along great. And certainly that's the most important thing, that those two guys handle it. But let, let's not kid each other. Guys in the locker room have their favorites. They, sure. they, 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 the locker room is divided who they maybe think should be the guys. And they may not vocalize it or say it, but that, that happens. Second down at six. Here is Bolden firing completes inside the 30. They're down close to their deepest penetration into Alabama territory. Well, the, the Boldens and the McGloins sit together, so yep. families get along, yeah. I guess. So it's all that. And that's <laughs> wonderful. It really is yeah. because, again, how those two guys handle the situation is the most critical thing in this whole operation. Penn State hurrying up, but time is running out. This throw intended for Moy is broken up. Dante Hightower got back there. I think you got to almost run some slant and goes because they, they've tried to throw slants all game Hasn't and have not hit one no. because uh, Alabama, is, is their, their corners are clued into it. Menzi and Kirkpatrick and Milner. So I think you got to do something off of that. You fake the slant and then take it up the field. Moy is the big receiver and he'll go out to the top of your screen. On second down at 10 at the 28. Bolden steps up in the pocket. He's going to take off with it again. Oh, man, and a head-on shot, and off came the helmet. C.J. Mosley. Oh. And he pops right back up. Dad says, that's cool. That didn't feel that good, I'm sure, though. And he had a concussion problem one yeah. time last year. Here's real time and real sound. Got to give him credit for popping up as yeah. quickly as he did. And the give and another collision, but it's going to be a first down run for Silas Red. Right now, Alabama, I mean, they, they obviously don't want to give up any more points, and so they're not going to play prevent or anything like that. But they're more than happy to let Penn State keep running the football and eating up all the clock and uh, not leaving themselves any time when he, if they would get the ball back. You saw Kirby Smart. The highly respected defensive coordinator right there near Nick Saban and right now he'd like to pitch the touchdown shutout. They gave up the field goal in the opening drive of the ball game and nothing since. And we're under three and a half minutes. He's one of the best in the business at what he does. Holding this one all is picked off by Barron. No can't, can't throw the slant against these guys today. Kirkpatrick was just hanging there and then the All-American safety who's already got an interception got his hands on it. This defense is going to cause a lot of teams to have fits this year, not just Penn State. This is just adding to the total yardage a little bit for Penn State, but it really doesn't matter right now. The only thing I'll say about this defense, I don't know how strong they are up front, just with their normal front three or four in terms of rushing the pass or with just three or four. This one in and out of the hands of Brandon Beecham. As we take a look at our All-State Good Hands play of the day, I just mentioned the All-American safety and captain of the defense from Mobile, Alabama, Mark Barron, and watch him go up for his 11th career interception right there. That took away another threat by Penn State today inside their own 10-yard line. And for all practical purposes, that was about the ball Holding, game. offense 67, 10-yard penalty, still second down. Left tackle, 
Quinn Barham. Barron didn't play in the uh, bowl game we did last year because of that torn pectoral muscle, but he is back to full strength and he is some kind of player. 6'2, yeah. 218 pounder. He will bring the wood to you and uh, he can cover just as well as he can hit. Well, and again, his experience, his knowledge of the defense, his ability to be a quarterback back there, get guys lined up. Bolden steps up, going to run with it again or try to, but he only gets to the line of scrimmage. Ed Stinson was there waiting for him. Well, you think about Alabama, where they go from here. And a game against North Texas after this at home, and then they get into their SEC schedule. Arkansas, their first SEC game in Tuscaloosa. Their schedule sets up pretty well in terms of their toughest games at home at Bryant-Denny Stadium. Third down at 20 now. Penn State running out of times. Time and going to the corner. Sean Kersey with a great catch of the one yard line. So they're down in scoring territory, 26 yard toss. Well, you know, a couple times Rob Bolton has underthrown the deep ball and it got intercepted once. This is a perfect throw over the outside shoulder. You only need one foot inbound. The right foot was inbounds when he made the catch. Shawnee Kersey with one of the better catches of the day. So now it's at the one yard line and Penn State can make it look a little better on the scoreboard if they can score a touchdown and we obviously would have an onside kick coming up. Golden looking to the sideline. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, Somebody's got to call timeout. <laughs> timeout, Penn State. The first time out of the half. It'll be a 30 second timeout. Mike McQuarrie is trying to give the signals and uh, shaking his head because they had to use a timeout. So down to two. But the ball is just inside the two. That's the good news for Penn State. We mentioned Alabama's schedule. Todd said it sets up pretty nicely for them. They were number two in the country last week, number three now because LSU moved ahead of them. But they're going to have a 2 0 start. As Todd said, North Texas, ESPN 3, Arkansas, Florida. And on through the lists. In Gainesville, that'll be a, an interesting game. Florida seems to be playing pretty well so far under new coach Will Muschamp. New offensive system with Charlie Weiss. Well, guys, these players down here on the bench for Alabama are thinking ahead just like you guys are. I heard some of the offensive linemen and Barrett Joes go, guys, we got to keep growing every week. This was a good start, but we've got 12 more, and we got to get better every week. Now, I'm no math genius, <laughs> but I think that means they're counting on 14 games, which, could, which means they're counting on a national championship. Yeah, they're, they're counting on Atlanta, and then they're counting on another one after that. Barrett Jones and that offensive line did a great job today. 13th play of the drive here for Penn State at the one-yard line. Bolden lost it to the corner and overshot Allen Robinson. We know that if you go back to 2010 and the way that regular season ended for Alabama with the gut-wrenching loss at home to Auburn after they had the big lead, uh, we got a little bit of a glimpse of what the chip on their shoulder was going to look like when we saw them in the Capital One Bowl a month later because they dismantled the Big Ten champion Michigan State team. And uh, so I think they carried that all the way through the summer, all the way through their conditioning programs. I heard they had videos of the second half of that Auburn game right. running through their weight room all during their, their lifting sessions in the winter. Airborne is red, second effort, almost lost the ball, but he's in, touchdown. They might look at this one too, but for right now it's Silas Red for a touchdown. It's always a little dangerous when you reach that ball out over the goal line. Silas Red, all the ball has to do is break the plane. It's good there, doesn't it? Yep. It's a 71 yard drive, 14 plays. Took him a lot of plays in four minutes and 21 seconds. And Rob Bolden stays in there as they will go for two. Thinking that uh, if they get it, it's a 16 point game and two touchdowns and two two point right. conversions. That's a lot of ifs, but 
you got to play the percentages I guess or the card that everybody looks at. So let's see if they can pick up the two point conversion and then the onside kick that will be upcoming. Bolden might run for this one dives and got it. Nice quick decision by Rob Bolden. I think the one thing I've seen out of him today that is a, is a dramatic improvement from when he played in Tuscaloosa last year. His decision making has been quicker today. Much more decisive throwing the ball when to run took a shot at the end of this play but this is a good decision that clock goes off in your head it's not open I got to do something else and he gets a valuable two points for his team. He's taking some big shots today too and that one I think it was his right calf or something as he was diving he grabs his leg but he did get the two and that will have an outside kick up upcoming 27 to 11. With a minute 53 remaining in the ball game. Yeah, a lot of the crowd sticking around. Huge crowd today of 107,846. Coming up September 22nd. Things are going to heat up in the city of Miami, Todd. You know why? Charlie's got three new angels, and they're taking down the criminals who are above the law. From executive producer Drew Barrymore, ABC's. Charlie's Angels, all new Thursdays this fall on ABC. I thought you were saying that uh, Miami was heating up because we're going there next week. That's, that's, right. what, that's, that's what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> well, I'm sure wherever you go to eat, that will heat up that particular <laughs> establishment. So we got an outside kick coming. Evan Lewis will do the honors. The good hands team for Alabama all up there 10 to 15 yards away from the football. This one's got a chance, but it's covered by Alabama, and they'll take over with a minute 52. Brad Smelly. Funny that on two kicking plays today, the tight end has made a nice play right there. Yeah. It's Smelly with a recovery and the outside kick, but I think the whole game changed on the fake punt, yeah. and they got it literally by maybe two inches. Yeah, and you, as Nick Saban explained to Holly, they didn't execute the play right. They thought it should have been a bigger play. They ended up making it just by that much of the football. But that seemed to, to give confidence to A.J. McCarron. And then he played with poise. He, he saw the field. He hit different receivers. And eventually that offensive line, you know, that they, they played a lot of different guys last week on the offensive line, moved some guys around. They kept that starting group the same. They had continuity with their offensive line. They had continuity with the quarterback. And eventually they wore down this Penn State defense. Holly was talking about the players saying we got we got to get better every week. They've gotten better from a week ago. And they give you the impression that maybe the sky is the limit for this team, at least with the defense they have. And as this guy grows into his jersey, number 10, A.J. McCarron, he's going to see more and more second time out of the half. different defenses. But today he's handled a, a huge crowd and a pretty good Penn yeah. State defense very well. Yeah, he has. Uh, you know, when you talk about Penn State, I mean, they still got a lot of football left, obviously. I mean, they, they wanted to fare well in this test today. Uh, early they played better but they still have uh, a lot ahead of them two more non conference games at Temple Steve Adazio former offensive coordinator at Florida the new head coach at Temple then Eastern Michigan before they get into Big Ten play and uh, you know the the end of their schedule is where it really heats up for them yeah, their last final three, three games yeah. and I, I you know when you get back to the quarterback situation uh, Joe Pa has left the building, not left the building, <laughs> but he's gone down to the locker room. Brent Richardson has got over 100 yards today, tacks on a few more. And we're down to 140 to go. Timeout Penn State for third and final timeout of the half. Be a 30 second timeout. That's the last Penn State timeout while we take a quick 30 second timeout. Robert Flores has got something for us. Robert. Brad, coming up on ESPN History, the first night game at the Big House. Michigan quarterback Denard Robinson leading the Wolverines against Notre Dame. That's coming up 8 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. And right here on ABC, Jimmy Johnson, the five time, five time defending Sprint Cup champion, leading the field at Richmond. Alabama leading the field here. Just about ready to leave the field with a big 
road victory in this 15th matchup. Alabama will go to 10 and 5 in the series. It started way back in that Liberty Bowl we talked about in 1959. Rip Engel was the head coach and Joe Paterno was his assistant. I didn't even put that together until Joe told us that yesterday. He said, you know, Liberty Bowl used to be in Philadelphia. <laughs> well, Liberty, <laughs> Liberty, you know, sense, the Liberty right? Bell. I didn't yeah. know that before they moved it to Tennessee. So you learn something every day, especially when you're around Joe Paterno, who is a national treasure in my opinion. He's up for another prestigious medal that the president would have to award him. The uh, government of Pennsylvania has nominated him for the second year. And uh, if anybody deserves it with all he and Sue have done for this school and the library and the football team and college football in general. Uh, yeah I'd say he'd be a pretty good recipient. At the 35 yard line first down. Alabama here in the final minutes with Philip Sims cleaning up that quarterback. And Eddie Lacy who's had a big day puts his head down and gets in the middle. You know talking about Joe Paterno and Nick Saban and I mentioned earlier that Joe said that Bear Bryant was still alive and tomorrow would have been Bear Bryant's 98th birthday on the uh, anniversary 10th anniversary of 9 11. And, uh, those two had great respect for each other when when Nick was at Michigan State he beat Joe twice at Penn State and then when you consider the Michigan State's only beat Penn State four times in the history of the program Nick did a pretty good job against Joe there too but we said you know uh, your thoughts about Joe Paterno and uh, he said you know there's mental toughness there's physical toughness and there's moral toughness and if any guy in college football's ever had the moral part of it it's Joe Paterno with what he's done at Penn State I thought that was uh, nicely yeah. said by Nick. I like how he explained it too. I mean, moral toughness being doing the right thing no matter what the circumstances are. Right. And, uh, and that's what Joe Paterno has been about, doing the right thing. And you know what? I think Nick Saban is doing the right thing at Alabama as well. Now they get a big win on the road, that's for sure. They thought it would be tough, and for at least part of the game it was. But then the Alabama defense stiffened, made things very tough on the two quarterbacks of Penn State, including Rob Bolden and Matt McGloin. And it's 27 to 11 as we go down to Holly. Now, Coach, I know you say it wasn't executed perfectly, but that fake punt really set a tone and gave your guys some juice. How did that really turn that first half around for you guys? Well, you know, I think the punt return in the second half was the thing that changed the field position and the momentum of the game and got us ahead in the game. It's a little bit disappointed the way we played two minutes at the end of the game defensively. There's always a lot of things you need to work on at this time of the year, but this is a great win for our team. It's a great win for the state of Alabama and all of our fans and people. This is a tough place to come and play, and I'm proud of our, our, our guys and the way they competed today. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you. Only Nick Saban would be worried about the last drive against his defense that made it 27 11. That's our final score. Alabama number three over Penn State. Don't forget Notre Dame and Michigan tonight on ESPN. Coming up next, NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Richmond. For Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe, and our entire crew, Brad Nessler saying so long from Penn State.